Hello, tree. Hello there, tree. I just wanted to get a little hug from this tree before I flew out again. Oh, it's so nice to be back in a tree. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm showing you guys some of the uh, tuning flights I was doing today on the King Kong 5x4x3 props. Uh, uh, I like them. Just got these uh, the mail yesterday. <laughs> Fair enough. Give it a minute. Thank you for that feedback. Uh, yeah, I was saying I this is some tuning flights from my um, the uh, King Kong five by four by three props. Uh, I just got them yesterday, and I got to fly them for the first time today. I like them. Uh, I was immediately able to raise my uh, gyro low pass from seventy to one hundred and raise my D-gain by 10 points on pitch and roll with absolutely no ill effects compared to the DYS 5x4x3 that I was flying on. Uh, it feels like they have a little bit less um, a little bit less thrust. I'm not sure. It's just a gut feel there. Uh, but um, overall, the tunability is great. Oh, almost hit the ground there. Tunability is great and, uh, and flight performance is better than the two blades while still maintaining that uh, the thing I really like about King Kongs, which is uh, that uh, they're, they're really flyable. You know, if you hit something, you're not immediately going to uh, be out of balance or go into the ground by the broken prop like you do oftentimes with an HQ. Although now HQ has the durable props, which of course are, are going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But um, yeah, so th th I feel like these King Kong 5x4x3s, that's what I've got here, are really living up to what I like about King Kongs. People say, oh, you should try the DYS. They're unbreakable. And I say, you're right that they're unbreakable. They will bend, and they'll stay bent, and then they're so out of balance you can't fly on them. So no, they didn't break, but no, it's not flyable either. The DYS, I go through DYS, uh, not DYS, the DAL. I apologize, the DAL props. I go, I go through DAL props as fast as I go through HQs because one crash and it's it's so out of balance it's not flyable even though it's not broken. Whereas these King Kong props, they seem like, to me, the perfect balance of flexible enough that if you hit something, it'll bounce back and still be flyable. Light enough that if it gets a little nick or a chip, you're not, you're not, you just grounded. You can just pick up your copter with a little nick or a chip in the, maybe even something a little worse and still go fly. I um, I posted a video to my channel today where I landed with uh, with with one of these missing, which you know these days that's hardly even worth mentioning. Gosh, you know, we do that all the time. But um, so far I'm very happy. I was so annoyed trying to tune the DYS props at how out of balance they were and how much work I had to do to tune around the noise that they were making. Uh, D gain filtering, etc., etc., etc. RC Addict says that they're out of stock now, and that's okay with me because I have like 60 of them. I bought, bought several packs. Um, the drink today is Country Time Lemonade. That's uh, the drink in our house these days with a little flavor shot of fruit punch uh, in it. So that's what I'm drinking today. Um, while the stream is coming up, um, oh, all the, oh you, you may be clicking the rainbow link. Yeah, if you want a rainbow assortment, then there's a separate listing, and then there's another listing for the specific colors. Of course, I got red because red is, um, I've decided my color scheme is red and black. And the reason I decided that was because I had red electrical tape one day. <laughs> and I was like, well, there you go. That's my color, I guess. Um, well, we're going to do black box log analysis. Of course we are. Uh, but as the stream is sort of coming online and people are joining, 
I thought I would talk about a few other things. I thought I would show you some of that tuning video. Very happy with these props so far. Very happy. King Kong 5x4x3. Um, I thought I'd show you a few other things that I have around the shop. You guys who are early to the stream will uh, get to enjoy that. So, since this web page came up here, let's look at this first. What do you on the stream think of this frame? You, know, you can also see here on the website uh, more information on the uh, on the on the desktop there. What do you think of this? It's, this is G10. It can also come in carbon. I've not seen the Horus drone. Dow 5040 VT. Yeah, I just sort of gave up on Dow once I had some bad experiences with them. Yeah, you're welcome to link RC Flyer to those props. You're more than welcome. Thank you for asking. Um, T5040 V2. I've been told by Brian at Multirotor Mania that the T5040 V2 are much, much better than the T5040 V1. I had high hopes for the Dow T5040 V1 prop uh, that it would be a good replacement for my... for The, the HQ 5x4x3 is the best 5x4x3 prop period. It's fantastic, except that it's so fragile and expensive, although I hear the prices come down. So I've been looking for a replacement for a long time, and I hoped that the Dow T5040 was going to be uh, the one, and I had a, it flew terrible for me. It was out of balance. I had crazy oscillations. It flew terrible. I junked it. I hear that the T5040 V2 is very good from Brian over at Multirotor Mania. I haven't had a chance to try it. Um, yeah. Uh, t -t 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 so, so this frame here, this was sent to me uh, by Atomic Aviation. They're the company whose website I've got up now. It is, um, it's the Mercury frame. It is, as, uh, as RC Flyer asked, it is tilt rotor, uh, tilt motors. It has the option, similar to the old Vortex, oh, the old Vortex uh, 250, you know, it's got uh, carbon tube arms and you can tilt the motors if you want to. I haven't got them tilted right now. It is G10, uh, although they do, I think they say they make a, I don't know if they make a carbon version or if they say they could make a carbon version. I, I'm i not sure what to think about this frame yet. Uh, I can't decide what to think about it. I can't, I, my first impulse when I saw it was to kind of squint at it, but I can't decide if that's because I'm just used to a particular kind of frame and this isn't that. But this is an interesting, this is an interesting frame. Got a sort of tab and slot construction there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, kind of reminds me of these motor mounts. Kind of remind me of the flight test. Uh, <laughs> the flight test, uh, you know, laser cut stuff that we used to get. Um, yeah. Let's see. YouTube won't let you link RC Flyer. That's okay. Just bang good, right? Uh, the T5040 V2, I'm told are good. I haven't flown them yet, that yet though. So let me show you what else I've got here. I've got, I'm super excited to show you this. I'm super excited to show you this. This is the Hollybro Shuriken. And um, I saw Bruce at RC Model Reviews uh, talk about this. And I thought, that looks pretty freaking cool. And I reached out to these folks and said, hey, can I have one? And they said yes. So sometimes it's good to be on YouTube. Uh, so I am really looking forward to giving this a fly and do a tuning series on it. Uh, it looked from Bruce's... St now, Bruce is not a, like a hardcore acro flyer. You know, you know, I don't think that's a controversial statement. But it looked, from, it looked like it was flying really good uh, in his video. And normally I would expect an RTF like this to not fly good. So when I saw that it looked like it was flying good in Bruce's video, I said, well, I'll give it a try and see if I can get a tuning video out of it. So I'm super psyched about this. Um, let's see. Go back in the chat here. Yeah, this... Are you talking about the weak point where the arm meets the midsection? Well, there's a metal bracket in here. There's an aluminum metal bracket in here. So I don't know about that. I think it's probably reasonably strong there. The carbon fiber, of course, is going to be pretty strong. Um, you'd have to crash it <laughs> and fly it to really find out how strong it's going to be. It is sort of, it's it's reasonably strong. I mean, I can squeeze it. It stays together. 
I, I can't just can't decide, you know. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the tilt motor mounts myself. I think that might just sour me on it personally. But I think that somebody out there might like this. Somebody who wants a little bit of a, a non-traditional uh, copter. Um, yeah, Veli FPV, you say it's awesome, especially for the price. And I'm guessing you're talking about the Shuriken. Yeah, the Shuriken is 315 bucks for a ready-to-fly. And it's it's really solid. It's really solid. I think you could probably crash the dickens out of it. I'm super excited about, look what they did with the video transmitter camera. Do you see how they put it behind the FPV camera for a little bit of protection, such as it is? That's that's smart. I think this, this has some potential. I'm sorry it has 1806 motors. I bet they're fine, but I kind of wish, and especially on four inch, 1806 motors are probably fine. But um, I, I hope that it would have like 2204 motors. Um, is it symmetrical front to back? This one is not symmetrical. This one is almost but not quite symmetrical. Yeah. The JJ Pro P200. What is that? I don't know what that is. Let's look that up. Is promising. Is that a... Uh, oh. Whoa. Look at that. It's a Pure X ready to fly. Wow. Bang good. Well, I don't know who this is, but that's something for two fifty US. Wow, that's that's something. If it's not if it's not shitty, then it has some potential to be exciting. Wow, how about that? Twenty two oh five, twenty three hundred mo. Wow, that's something. Yeah. Um, RC Attic did a video on the 200 version. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, the King Kong Triblades are... I got onto King Kong because they were cheap and decent, but mostly cheap. You get the two blades for 25 cents, and the thing is that they're, they're fairly durable, so you don't go through them very fast either. And these are... these I, I King Kong really hits a sweet spot for me of performance, price, durability, etc. I'm very pleased. So let me show you something else that you guys are going to love. You guys are going to love this. What's this? What does that look like? What does that look like? I'll wait for the chat to catch up. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What does that look like? <laughs> this is an alien. It is a Rotor Riot alien. That is correct. I believe it's a Rotor Riot alien. And if you look very, very closely, what flight controller is in there? What is that? Yes, indeed. That's a KISS flight controller. Ah, <laughs> that's a Martian. No. Um, after my video, my, <laughs> my controversial, is that too strong a word, video about the, uh, the KISS flight controller and my experience with it, uh, a, a person uh, from my... Patreon said, hey, dude, I have a KISS copter that I built, and I'll just send it to you, and you can borrow it as long as you want to borrow it for testing purposes, and uh, you can then get the KISS flight experience without having to go through the KISS build experience if you don't want to. So uh, thank you so much to that person, and I'm sure that everyone on the channel is going to be very excited to see this content start coming out. Well, that's interesting you say that, Flying Circus. I, my plan for this, so my plan for this is as follows. I'm going to fly it as it is, exactly how he sent it to me, okay? Then I'm going to flash it to defaults, and I'm going to do a PID tuning series on it, and I'm going to see how it tunes. Can I tune it? Does it tune differently than Beta Flight? I'm going to tune it as best I can, and I reckon it'll probably fly pretty good because, I mean, obviously this setup will fly well. If I can't tune it, it's my fault, not the setup. But then uh, then may, what, I, what I might do is I might go ahead and flash Betaflight onto it and say, okay, now which flies better, in my opinion, KISS or Betaflight on the exact same hardware? I don't know. That's all. Don't hold your breath for that because, like, I'm ab I'm about to go on another another business trip for several weeks, so I won't be doing this until I get back. So it's gonna be at least three weeks until I even start working on this content, and that means it'll be six weeks before you even see it on the channel. But since you're here on the live stream, I wanted to give you a heads up. A very kind 
uh, patron uh, of mine sent this to me. He said I could keep it as long as I need it. He said, if you break it, just send me back the parts. I can't believe how generous some people are sometimes. And uh, so, so there will be some KISS content coming on my channel at some point in the future. That's nice. That is correct. You can flash KISS. Uh, you can flash Betaflight to the KISS board, but not the other way around. Uh, the, the developer of KISS only wants it running on his hardware. Uh, for, ver for Well, for support reasons is the, is the g generous way of putting it. Yeah, he doesn't want to have to support 17 different kinds of boards with all the support issues that would come from that. So he only lets it run on his hardware. But you can flash Betaflight to his board. Um, here, this is the, this is the Canis M4. I've been doing a tuning series on this. I'm having some crazy problems tuning this. No fault of the frame, I don't think. Uh, I'm having some yaw noise and it might be, this is an MCU 6000. So it's not the sort of classic, uh, yaw glitching that you get on the 9250 or the 6500. But uh, I'm having some yaw noise that's making it hard to tune, and i got to sort that out. That's unfortunate. I really wish I could get a feel for how this flies when it's properly tuned, but it's just not there. So that's too bad. And that is that. That's all my copters and stuff. So um, why is everybody talking about going back to Betaflight 3.0? What do you mean back? Betaflight 3.0 is forward. It's not even out yet. Clarify your question. Uh, I'm sure that that alien has KISS on it at the moment. Um, motor maintenance, bearing oil, I don't know about that. Some people say that bearing oil is useful, and other people say it just gets gets dirt in the bearings. I don't know. I don't find that my motors last long enough for oil to have made a difference. Uh, <laughs> um, hey, one other thing I wanted to show you guys before we get into the the content is... I did a review of the um, Furious FPV flight controllers, the Pico Blocks, and then the Combi Mini on my channel. And I actually have been looking at some of the stuff at Furious, and I had a little conversation with uh, with one of the guys over there. You guys should check out Furious FPV. They're doing some seriously cool stuff. They're not just like reselling the same old crap from China, if you will. Like for example, a good example of what I'm talking about is this this mini uh, receiver for FreeSky that they've got. I don't, I think they developed this. I don't know, maybe I could be wrong about that. They've, uh, it's, a, it's a mini receiver, 23 bucks, so similar in price to the X4R, but uh, designed to really fit in very, very small builds. Um, a very cool little thing they've got here. Here's a ready to fly. Reminds me a lot of the Shuriken from Holybro in terms of the, uh, the, uh, the frame layout and so forth. Um, and uh, also very interesting things. So check out Furious FPV. They have some really interesting products over there. Um, yeah, really interesting stuff over there. Innovative new stuff that I'm not seeing. Again, not just, well, okay, so I recognize these antennas, right? But a lot of it is not is stuff that they're developing, not just the same old junk from China. It's certainly worth, your, worth a look. Um... What receiver for the Futaba T8FG? I don't know the Futaba ecosystem. I'm very sorry to say. Uh, I, I don't know that. Yeah, Futaba does do S-Bus. I believe that Futaba S-Bus is different than FreeSky S-Bus. I think that FreeSky S-Bus is inverted and Futaba S-Bus is non-inverted. But Futaba invented S-Bus and then FreeSky sort of borrowed it is my understanding of how it worked. Um, so you should be able to find a Futaba receiver that does S-Bus and use it if, if you've got a Futaba transmitter. That's what I would say. Um, what kind of board is required to record black box? Well, you can get an open log device and run off your serial port, or you can get a flight controller with a data flash chip on board and record on board. And for more on that, let's see if I can find... No, that's not gonna. That's not gonna tell me anything. <laughs> uh, uh, nope. Uh, I can never find this one because the search terms. All right, there we go. What I would suggest is that you check out this video, 
how to configure Blackbox. I talk about some of the, the, the different ways to set it up and then also the pros and cons of the different ways to do it. Okay, well, now that the intro is out of the way, let's take a look at our first analysis. Um, let's see what we got here. This is doomed FT FPV. Wants to improve the tune. Needs a little tweak. Um, okay, so just general tuning advice. You're using the DAL 5040 V2 tri-blades. The DAL 5040 V2. Interesting. Okay, so that's the good one. 2300 kV motors. Sure. And let's just take a quick look at the frame for fun. All right, great. Nothing remarkable there. So let's see what we can do to about uh, talk about improving the tune. So I'm going to look for, here's the longest log. It's 4 minutes, 20 seconds. Let's pick that one. And I can see down here at the bottom, this is the throttle. And there's a lot of throttle punches. So this should be... Very interesting uh, activity here, stuff going on. Um, antennas on a diversity setup for indoors. Uh, it's an interesting question. You see a lot of people combining a, a little like a 5 or an 8 dB patch with a clover leaf. Uh, that's, that's a common thing that you see. Um, I, haven't, I don't fly diversity very much, so uh, I don't know. I've been thinking about setting up like a diversity ground station, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Okay, so here's our longest flight, and we got a lot of throttle punches and activity, so there should be something interesting in here. The first thing that I always do is I look at the gyros. We're going to look at them with 0% smoothing, and I'm going to zoom all the way out and look for how thick the lines are. The thicker the lines are, the more vibration and noise there is in the copter. A copter with too much vibration and noise will not be able to be tuned well. Think of the vibration and the noise level of the copter as a ceiling on how, how sharply you can tune it before you, you hit the wall and you can't tune it any sharply anymore. A, a copter that's tuned very softly could have a high noise level and it'd be fine. It would fly kind of like it's flying through pudding, but it, it would it'd be okay. A uh, copter that has very low noise level can be tuned much more sharply. The The thickness of these lines, I would say that these lines are are on the thin side of good. So they're, they're not just acceptable, but good. Um, yeah, maybe even excellent, depending on the amount of filtering you've got. So I think you have no problems with vibrations here. Nothing is really jumping out. That's good. That's just sort of the... Like you go to the doctor and the doctor takes your pulse and checks your blood pressure, right? But every time I look at a log, the first thing I do is I look at the gyros to see if there are any crazy problems. If you go to the doctor and you're complaining that your knee hurts and you go there and your pulse is 180 and your blood pressure is through the roof, they're not going to look at your knee. They're going to fix that problem first. And the gyros are kind of like that. So now let's take a look at the roll axis is where I like to go next because the roll axis is usually a lot more active and uh, and will we'll tell us more about the tune. I'm going to zoom back in. Black box, okay, so this is a question everybody's going to ask. The black box explorer that I'm using is, is Betaflight black box log viewer. Not, this, is the, this is the one that you have. That you got from the Chrome store, Clean Flight Black Box Log Viewer. This is Beta Flight Black Box Log Viewer, and this is the one I'm using with the extra amazing features. Uh, there's also a, and you want to go to releases, I guess. Yeah, and it's got. I'm not even on the latest rev, but that's where these extra features are coming from. It's really fantastic. Um. 
Yeah, no, I don't have a, a like a printable checklist or guide to PID tuning. And part of the reason for that is that I don't feel like it's so open-ended, right? That I feel like I have guidelines that I use and general procedures, but it could go a different direction at any time. And I just don't feel like I have enough of a mental grasp on it to make sort of a checklist, you know? So if I had one criticism to give myself about my channel and, and the, the, the education that I do, it would be that it's very sort of stream of consciousness. And I hope that you guys are interested enough that you just kind of sort of soak it up. And eventually after soak, you, you'll get it'll all be in there. I wish that I could put it together in a sort of a codified way. I have done courseware development before, not on this topic, but on other topics. But you have to really have a grasp of how everything fits together, you know, and, and I just haven't done that yet. Maybe someday I will. So unfortunately, no. You just got to kind of put, the, put it on in the background and listen <laughs> while you do while you're cleaning the house. All right. So let's take a look here at the roll axis. I'm just going to look for something active going on. I don't see a lot of activity right now. These lines are very flat right now. Not much is going on, right? Let's look for like a, a roll or something, the 360 roll. Here as the throttle goes up, we see the gyros start to get a little bumpier. That's, you know, but nothing extreme. We have a flip or a roll, or rather, a 360 roll. Here's something. Yeah, a flip there. Just not a lot of activity. Here we, So here you see where the throttle was down for a long time. And then as you raise the throttle, we get this shutter here. Look at the gyro line. The gyro line goes up, down, up, down. That's the roll axis going back and forth like this. The, pr the throttle was down. And then as the throttle is raised, we get this shutter. That's prop wash. Right? Yeah, I do, I do feel like if I could come up with such a thing, and maybe someday I will, I just haven't got there yet. Um, someday I will. I'll make. I'll write a book. <laughs> That'll be something else. So here's some prop wash. We know that's prop wash because the throttle was down, therefore the copter was falling. And then as soon as we raise the throttle, we get this oscillation. Nothing to see there. The lines are very... There's no... The P and the D term are not doing hardly anything. So here's a roll. Finally, we got a roll. Nice. And when we go into the roll, we see the, the, the P. Let's get RC command in here as well. So RC command is the stick. It's what the stick is doing. And no, 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 not that. Sorry. Here we can see this is the roll stick going uh, maybe to the left. I'm not sure if it's the left or the right. Um, and here we can see that as the stick pushes the copter to the left, let's assume it's to the left, uh, the P-term goes up. The P-term rises and pushes the gyro into the roll. So the gyro tells us what the copter is doing. The, the P-term is, is pushing the copter into the roll. That's all completely normal. Now during the roll, the P-term is relatively stable. And then as the stick returns to center, we can see that the P-term the, the P opposes the movement. Here, the gyro is positive. The copter is rolling left. The, uh, the P-term goes negative as the stick begins to fall, which slows the move down. And here, the gyro is falling. That means the copter is slowing down. As the gyro hits the center line here, this is the zero line, that indicates that the copter has stopped moving. And then as the, as the gyro goes below the line, the copter is now moving back the other direction. So this is a little bit of bounce back. And that's quite, quite normal to see. That's not uncommon, especially if your roll rate is very high. We can see that right here, the gyro, the roll rate is 816 degrees per second, which is a moderately high roll rate. So a little bit of rebound at the end. Maybe we could try and tune to, to minimize that, but, uh, but it's not necessarily a problem. Um, 
We can see here as the stick returns to center, the pilot overshot a little bit. And so we can see the effect that had on the P-term. Notice that as the stick goes the other direction, here the stick is pushing left. Now the stick crosses the zero line and is pushing right. And the P-term tries to make that happen, right? Tries to push the cup to that direction. So we have a little bit of wobble here in the stick. Uh, and, and anytime you see an undesired flight behavior, like this rebound here at the end of the roll, it's always good to check RC command to see just to make sure that the copter, you're not actually mistakenly telling the copter to do the thing that it's doing that you don't want it to be doing. Look at what the stick is commanding. And this may indicate that your fingers are a little sloppy, or this may indicate that you have a bad pot, maybe you need a new gimbal, that kind of thing. Overall, what I'm seeing here is the copter looks really undertuned to me. I don't have high def video, high def or, uh, or even FPV video. Video with audio would be really useful to hear the motors. But just overall, it, the, the P and the D term just aren't doing anything. They're just zeroed out almost all of the time. And you are doing some aggressive maneuvers. It's just there's not a lot going on. So the copter feels undertuned to me is my first inclination. Let's look at the pitch axis real quick. Similar on the pitch axis. Very little going on. Never see any, uh, any, any, the P terms sort of wake up and start rolling and moving. Okay. So the co we have a little more activity some of the time, but overall it feels undertuned to me, not overtuned. So I would say, let's take a look at the, the PIDs here. I haven't even looked at the yaw axis. Um, I would, I would start working up P. So your D is very low, and that's good. If you're starting to tune, that's good. For your finished tune, you'll probably want a higher D. But for now, as you're working up the tune, a D of five, I, will, I wouldn't have D that low unless I thought there were problems with the D term. So I would start with a default of 18 and work the P gains up until oscillation starts to come out. And I've had pretty good luck with Betaflight 2.9 of waiting till the oscillations start to come out and then raising D to sort of tame the oscillations. If you go back to like 261, the D term, I don't remember the D term being very effective on earlier versions of Betaflight at taming oscillations. It did other things, like it could reduce bounce back after a flip or a roll. But as far as taming oscillations, if the P was high enough that you were on the edge of oscillation, Adding D didn't really fix that, and sometimes it made it worse. But with Betaflight 2.7, 2.8, and especially 2.9, it's just gotten better and better. I have had great luck of tuning P to the oscillation point, where the oscillations just start to come out. And I mean, I don't mean during normal straight flight. No, no, no. I mean like you're doing sharp turns, and you start getting kind of hard prop wash oscillations, and then you raise D from 18 to 25 or 30 or 35, and they sort of smooth out, and then you have a really nice flying copter. It feels to me like your P gains are too low, and that's the next thing I would do, is I would start working P up until you started to see, uh, you get a sharper stick feel, and the oscillations will start to come out. That's what I would do. Okay. This is a, uh, a wide mouth quart mason jar. Um, the wide mouth jars are very good because it's easier to, to get the stuff in, whereas the narrow mouth jars, it's also easier to get the stuff out. If you've got some kind of jam or jelly, you don't have the, the lip there to get under. And uh, they make better cups, in my opinion. Okay, we're going to call that one. Thank you for your submission, Doomed FPV. Yeah, Doomed FPV... Take a look at my Practical PID tuning series and do what I do there. It feels like, um, yeah, it feels like, it feels like there's more you could do in that direction. If you're, if you're having, os you say you had oscillations from the motors, but your PIDs are, your P gains are really low. So, and it's not like you have an ultra high thrust to weight ratio copter where you'll have to reduce the P P to where you're at. So if you're having oscillations that you need to tune out, uh, it's, that's interesting. You've gone, you sort of softened the tune from the defaults. Your P and your D are both super low. 
and my experience is that the defaults are usually just about right or maybe a little little low and you come up so i'm surprised if this is the best tune you can get and i'm surprised if you can't raise p a little bit all right Devo, if you have your P gain at 14 and you can't get oscillation, congratulations. You have a magic copter. It should fly, it should be flying fantastic, shouldn't it? Your P's are high, your ultra sharp stick response, and no oscillations. What more do you want? Great. I don't believe I don't, something else is going on because with a P of 14, here's the thing. I've had my P gains as high as 10 or 12 on my QAVR. Oh, no, that's sorry. That was the Flynoceros. That's this little guy. So it, it has a higher thrust to weight ratio than normal. And your P's will generally be a little lower than on a bigger copter. But I, I worked P up to about 10 or 11 and got it to the point where it was kind of shuddering almost all the time. Um, so if you're at 14 and you're getting no oscillation at all, I'm really surprised. Uh, but hey, anything's possible. Here we go. Nick779, Multirotor Mania Mantis. There you go. You are correct that the black box logging rate is based on the PID loop. So if your PID loop is at 2 kilohertz, I would have a 2 to 1 logging rate for about a 1 kilohertz logging rate. I usually shoot for about 1 kilohertz or a little lower on the logging rate. Uh, Baron Von Riot, maybe... I don't know about that, but maybe. Uh, Lee says, make sure you have all your motor screws in. I often run only two motor screws on many of my builds and haven't had a problem. Uh, some people say, oh, but don't your motors fall out? Um, it's never been a problem for me yet, fingers crossed. Um, I haven't noticed a tuning thing. Uh, so, Devo, very good question. In general, raising the P term will not damage anything. P-term oscillation, think about the frequency of P-term oscillation, right? That's what P-term oscillation sounds like. That's my impression. Congratulations. You guys, you guys always like it when I make copter sounds. Uh, I do not lock tight them. I don't. I just screw them in tight and make sure there's tight. Think about the frequency of that. That is not a very high frequency thing. So raising the P gains will bring out oscillation, but it's a relatively low frequency oscillation. And so it's not going to really kill anything. I mean, it could shake your copter. It could make you crash, but it's not going to burn your motor. D gain. If you raise D gain, you can burn your motor or burn your ESC. Be very careful raising D gain. Always pay attention to the temperature of your motors. when you. If you raise D gain by 10 points to try and fix something, fly for 30 seconds, really crank the motors, but then land and check. Okay, if you're playing with your filters, same deal. But you can safely raise P term, P gain through the roof. And in fact, it's a good exercise if you've never done this. Set up an in-flight adjustment and raise just the roll or just the pitch, P gain, and just raise it and let it keep going up and fly the copter. Just, just flip the switch, let it keep going up, fly the copter in circles around the field, right? Be ready to disarm, be safe. And feel what happens as it goes up and how the sort of response of the copter changes. And then eventually you'll get to the point where it's kind of shuddering and shimmering all the time. And then you got to stop and come back down. And by the way, if you don't save before you unplug your battery, in-flight adjustments get canceled. So you can play with in-flight adjustments all you want. And when you're done, unplug the battery. Your copter's back the way it was. It's a free experience. I think a, everyone who wants to get into tuning should do an exercise where they start with very low P gain, like 1.5 or 2, and slowly work it up to very high and feel what the copter feels like and how its response changes. I think that's a very safe and easy exercise as long as you're careful not to crash into something or lose control of your copter. You're not going to damage any hardware, probably. It's not like playing with D gain where you could burn something. It's a great exercise, and you should really do that. All right. Nick is concerned about gyro noise. Let me get this file downloading. We got three files. Okay. Concerned about gyro noise. 
You're right, Nick, that with the five inch motors around 2300 kV, 200, 250 hertz is, is, I don't think that's actually the primary signal. I think that's, I think it's like a resonant frequency or something, but that's, there is a noise peak around 200, 250 hertz. You are correct about that. Lowering the soft, I found that lowering the soft filter by 10 hertz doesn't make much of a difference for me at least. I, I, you know, if I'm going to lower the soft filter, I'm going to go from 100 to 80 to 60, probably. That's pretty much, I can't really find much of a difference with the soft filters doing them more finely than that. Interesting. Interest, not sure why the Naze or the Mantis would be different, except that you've gone to, to 4K, 2K, but maybe letting more noise in, but you should be able to filter that out. Let's take a look. Here's the Mantis config, and then there's the Naze config. Do we have, why are there three logs here? I'm not really sure what the three logs are for, but okay. Oh, geez. Oh, well, I don't even know what to do with this. Uh, let's look at these. Let's see what we got. I'm just going to assume this is the uh, the Mantis. There's just a million logs here. I'm not really sure what to do with. I'm certainly... That's the RG20. Let's just pick one of these. One, two, seven. I hope I've picked the right one and I'm not going to give you advice on something that's not relevant. Gyro noise. Let's start there. Um, roll is a little noisy here. The thickness here is a little noisy. Overall, everything is very thin. You definitely, I can see from the thinness of these lines that you're filtering pretty heavily. Let's see where you're filtered. No, determ at 90, gyro at 80. That's not super heavy. And you say you're having issues. Roll, bounce back. All right, well, let's have a look and find a roll. Here's a roll. Oh, that's a big bounce. You are correct about that. So take a look at the gyro here. Actually, let's just bring up the roll axis. Take a look at the gyro here. Gyro, he's rolling left. The gyro is negative. As the stick begins to recenter, the gyro decreases. The copter is slowing down. And then there is this huge rebound here. This huge rebound here. It's, it's pretty substantial. <clears throat> so what can we do to fix it? The first thing I think about when I have rebound, first of all, notice that the rebound is, the stick is centered, so this is all the PID loop here. Notice that the rebound on the gyro, it's not just one rebound and then smooth. It is a, a rigging, you could call it. It's multiple oscillations, right? Boom, 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 okay? So, in general, Multiple oscillations indicates excess P gain or not enough D gain. A single soft bounce could be low P gain. And a single hard bounce could be slightly high P gain. We don't see any crazy oscillations. 
you're doing a lot of rolls here. That's cool, but I kind of wish I could see something other than a roll. Let's look at your pids. Your roll P feels low to me. I know you've run through a million scenarios, though, so I don't want to just kind of say, oh, your roll P is low. Here's the interesting thing. If you go from the nays to the mantis, the pids shouldn't change that much. I'm curious what happens if you set the mantis to the exact same settings you had on the nays, the exact same sampling rate, gyro rate, everything, and the same pids, and then, uh, and then see if the issue is gone, and then change sort of one thing at a time. Um, in general, to get rid of this bounce back, I think the first thing I would do is raise your roll P. I don't have a video to, to see and hear the frequency of the oscillation, but the oscillation looks relatively soft. It doesn't look, hang on, it doesn't look like a sinusoidal shape. When P-term oscillation gets very hard because P is too high, you get a sinusoidal shape. Uh, so because this doesn't look like a clean sinusoidal shape, it, that sort of feels to me like P is low. I think I would raise P here. I think that's what I would try. But I would also suggest that you try setting the mantis to the exact same settings you had on the nays with the exact same pits. It should fly the same. The mantis has a 60-50 gyro on it. That's the same as the nays. It really should fly the same. It's, it's, it's an F3 instead of an F1, but... That doesn't make much difference. It's the same gyro chip. If you set the settings the same, I, I don't know why it would fly different. So that's what I would say. This looks like soft overshoot without hard oscillation, and that feels to me like low P. When I look at your actual P gain, pardon me, sorry, your P number feels low to me as well at 3.8. I think I would raise, raise roll P. That's what I would do. Okay, I hope that turns out to be helpful. Could it be due to the flight controller being hard mounted? Good question. A soft mounted flight controller will always need less filtering and be able to be tuned sharper than a hard mounted one. But the noise we're seeing from the gyro doesn't look excessive. And in fact, it looked pretty clean. It almost looked a little over filtered, except for a couple times when the, when I think the roll got a little noisy. So I don't think that, I think it would certainly not hurt to soft mount the flight controller, but I don't think that's the issue. What logging rate should you use for black box logging? I shoot for a one kilohertz logging rate. So whatever your PID loop is at, then shoot for one kilohertz or maybe slightly slower than that even. If you want, if you're, if, what I find is that if I'm logging at one kilohertz to an open log device, then during very extreme movements when the copter is really flipping out, I'll get breakup. But most of the time I don't have breakup. If you're logging to data flash, you you could log. At, you're not going to get breakup because the data flash chip can can keep up. You could log a little slower than that, but I wouldn't go too much slower than that because eventually, you, you 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 the data becomes not very helpful. Chai Stai, uh, how about that ZTW motor and ESC all in one? I know so. I don't know if it's the exact same one. Maybe it is. I'm really turned off by the idea of an ESC and motor in one. Number one, because I'm suspicious, and I'm not going to make the same mistake that I did, uh, if it was indeed a mistake, <laughs> with the TBS Power Cube. I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, make do the same thing I did there. I'm suspicious that a motor with a built-in ESC has a mediocre ESC. Uh, until proven otherwise, I'm going to assume that the manufacturer is 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 not selling for performance but is selling for convenience because it's an all-in-one product so if that's true then this motor with built-in esc i would want to know that the esc was good but then also then if you smoke the esc now the motor's no good if you smoke the motor the esc is no good so uh, i will say though if you've got a build a very tight build having the esc built into the motor will get the esc off the arm and will make it a lot easier the alternative might be like a four-in-one ESC, like the little B four-in-one, and that's 
you know, now you've got it in your flight control stack. And if you smoke one ESC, you've smoked all four. With the motor and the ESC in one, then you have a different, a different sort of a scenario. But you've got the ESCs off the arms, so that's nice. I have not seen the Race Star ESCs. By the way, you can replace the ESC without replacing the motor. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That that's a good decision. I agree with that decision wholeheartedly. Um, uh, I was going to say something. Uh, oh yeah, for re related to the black box logging rate. If all you want to do is get a stick overlay, you know, for a YouTube video, then you could log at much lower rate, like a hundred hertz or maybe even fifty hertz. Okay. Uh, because the stick overlay doesn't require a huge amount of resolution. But if you're trying to do any tuning-related stuff, I think 1 kilohertz is about as slow as I would want to go. Here we go with another log. <clears throat> Just general tuning advice, okay. And we have a video, so I'll get that downloading. And here is the that will take a few minutes. You can submit the logs to my video responses thread. It is black box log video responses on RC groups. Please read the first threat. Read the first post so you have an idea of how to submit, um, and uh, and that's how you get into the queue, which, as you can see, is kind of substantial. One minute left. I did a test today. Well, if this is downloading, I'll tell you. I did a test. The video is coming. And um, I set my copter to multi-shot 32 kilohertz unsynced. So 8K, 8K, 32K. And I raised the P gain to the point where it was oscillating. Almost oscillating a little bit in straight flight. But just barely holding it together in straight flight. And then anytime I went into a turn, it would it would shudder. Okay? Got that picture? So my P was around 10, 10, 10.5. Um, and then I went from 8K, 8K, 32 to 8K, 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 unsynced. No difference. And then I went to 8K, 8K, synced. No difference. And then I went to 8K, 2K, synced. No difference. And then I went from multi-shot to one shot. 8K, 2K synced. The oscillations got worse. So I conclude that, like, like I, uh, I didn't expect the oscillations to go away. But I, I expected something to change. No, no change. So I conclude that um, multi-shot makes a difference. Even at 2 kilohertz. No question in my mind about that after this test. The oscillations got significantly worse on one shot compared to multi-shot, even at 2 kilohertz. And um, I conclude that, Sam, uh, that the motor output rate, I mean, you could do a, 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 a test on the bench where you spin the motor, like Quad McFly is doing tests where you could see microseconds of difference between 32 kilohertz and 8 kilohertz. But in flight, I couldn't, I couldn't tell a difference. So I'm going to run my copters at, I'm going to run them at either 8K synced or, or, or 4K synced, depending on which board I've got. And that's just going to be it. <laughs> uh, that's just going to be it. I kind of thought that conversation would generate more chat. I'm surprised. Nobody's, I thought that was pretty interesting.
maybe even controversial. You're so interested that you're you're just you you stunned to silent thinking about it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at this one. Did you give me a sink? Nope. Let's sync this up first. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Oh, I can't. I can't use videos that have music in the background because I might get copyright flagged. I'm sorry to say. That's a shame. Hold on. I'm going to stop broadcasting the sound while I sync the video. Hold on. So you shouldn't hear the sound from this video now. Oh, I should be doing this in freaking black box. Dumbass. Hold on, I'll get this synced. There we go. So I'm still going to need to leave the sound off, unfortunately. Uh, so you guys are going to have to take my word for what I'm hearing with the motors. Okay, let's look at this tune. So right off the ground, maybe it was ground effect, but I heard a little, a little something. Let's see if the music is not as audible once the copter starts flying. <laughs> Okay, do y'all see that shudder at the end of the, of the roll? Let's watch it again. There's a kind of a, a shiver almost at the end of the roll. Let me turn the sound up the smidge as well. Uh, yeah, hang on. Right there. A very fast shiver at the end. No, I live in Knoxville. Um, that is... Maybe excess P gain, although the, the shiver is so fast, and maybe it has to do with the D term. P term oscillation is usually lower frequency. So that's interesting. Ooh. Now, see. You could say that that was prop wash. Watch it again. But that's more than just prop wash. Number one, it wasn't a very sharp turn. It wasn't like a boom, sharp 180, uh, prop wash. It was just a turn and the copter oscillated. So what we're looking at here is P gain that is on the edge of too high. It's too high, it's over the edge. It's not unflyably high, but if we look here, look at what that looks like. Look at the P term here. Do you see how this is starting to look like almost a pure sine wave? Not quite. It's not there yet. It's going above and below the line approximately the same amount, right? And it's smoothing out. We've got a little discontinuity here, right? It goes up, and then instead of making a sine wave shape, it goes down and jagged here. But it's starting to look like a sine wave. When the P term starts to look like a sine wave like that, that's excess P gain. And when you get oscillation on a relatively mild turn like this, that's also excess P gain. Yeah, yeah. So this copter has too much P gain on roll, hands down, in my opinion. Yep, see? And there, that was prop wash, right here when you raise the throttle after the fall. That's when prop wash happens, watch. But, but it's not just a little prop wash shutter you can see again, and you can hear if you train your ears to listen to it. This is this is a, a, a p-term oscillation here. See, it looks like a pure sine wave almost. Okay, so too much roll p-game for sure.
We're getting something like it on 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 pitch, but it's hard to judge here because the the roll roll is roll p term is active on flips and flips as well. The copter has to be stabilized on the roll axis while you're doing flips. So that shutter at the end of the flip could it have been the roll p term? Hang on, right there. No, it looks like you can see the nose going up and down. So you've all got the same thing going on on the pitch axis. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, ugh. oh, oh boy. Where is it? There, oh, yeah, crazy oscillation here. So your roll and your pitch P, oh, Jesus. Oh, kill me, kill me now. <laughs> Whoa, jeez, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh man, those are that's too high. That's way too high, way too high. I'm amazed this copter could fly like that. Beta flight is amazing. Let's look at your yaw axis with a P of 23, 23. Oh geez, that's not that's not too bad. Wow, your yaw axis is actually I don't know what's going on there. Oh, I see. No, there you can see as I zoom out. That's you got a lot of back and forth on the yaw axis as well. Okay, so you're, 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 you've gone way off the deep end. Your P is, your P is more than a little high. Your P is way high. Um, I don't want to make too broad of a statement, but in general, on a, like a 4S copter, a typical 210, 220 size copter, if your P is over, let's say 10 on pitch or roll, you're probably, something is up. That's probably not right. On yaw, maybe it could get up to 10, although I don't see that as much now as I used to. Um, they need to come way down. They need to come way down. They're, 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 they're over the moon. Um, like, I don't know where they need to be, but a range of, say, 5 to 8 is more typical. So, so yeah, you lower those. Uh, your eye is... is surprisingly high as well although not in a completely unacceptable range but i'm i'm surprised with p this high why you've also got i this high i think you need to go back and start from scratch i would just start this one from scratch reset everything start from scratch uh because i don't know how you got here but there were signs that your p was too high some time ago and you kept going if you really want to try to stick this tune out, raise your D. I don't recommend that you do this. But if you really want to try and stick this one out, raise your D and see just how crazy your P can be with your D bringing it back into, into, into uh, control. You may end up with a fabulously flying copter, but I don't think so. I think you should start from scratch and work P up and look for signs that the P is too high. Look for those prop wash oscillations. You've gone past sharp stick feel to, to crazy oscillations. Okay. No, no, I'm not. Yeah, Highway, you're 100% right. I, I hope I'm not perceived as busting on anybody, busting anybody's chops. There is no shame in, in being ignorant. There's no shame. If everybody knew everything, then we all wouldn't be here. So, I, I mean, I chuckled when I saw the numbers and had a reaction, but... I don't mean that in a way of making fun of anybody or, or certainly not making fun of anybody not knowing better. So it was just those are super high numbers. I was like, oh, yeah, no, well, clearly some, like the, uh, the answer is staring me in the face. But no, we absolutely shouldn't be, shouldn't be uh, making fun of everybody. So I hope I'm not perceived as having done that. Uh, I certainly don't mean to. Yeah, FBV Flyby, thank you for your submission. I would say that you should go look at my practical PID tuning series on my YouTube channel and and watch through that at for, and look for examples of what the signs are that your P gain is starting to be too high. Because I think it's good to work P gain up. I think in general the defaults for P are low for most copters. I think that's intentional. You'd rather have a little bit soft flying copter than a copter that oscillates too much. But in general I try and work P up and look for signs that P is getting too high, and then I come back down again. And that's what I think you should do. You've, you've missed those signs and you've just kept going and, and now you're in a bad place. All right.
Highway, I disagree. If you're a beginner and you want to fly acro or racing, don't fly auto level at all. Don't do it. You, you, you're just going to make it harder for you to learn to actually fly when you do it. Um, that's my opinion. Now, start on a simulator if you like. Start with a little, you know, a little uh, a toy copter in acro mode. They, you can learn to fly on one of those, you know, one of the little $30 toys. But, but don't fly auto level mode if you want to learn to fly acro or racing. It, you, every hour you spend learning to fly acro mode is an hour you could be spending learning, I'm sorry, auto level. Every hour you spend learning to fly auto level mode is an hour you're going to, you could have been spending learning to fly acro mode and another half hour you're going to spend unlearning the bad habits you learned when you learn to fly auto level. So you're just making your life harder. Uh, that's, that's what I think about that. If you're going to fly a phantom and you're going to do real estate photography, right? Or you're going to do, uh, you know, any kind of aerial photography with a phantom. Yeah, fly in GPS mode. That's what that's for. But if you want to race, people sometimes look at my videos and they say, were you in rate mode? And I'm like, yes, of course. I Every single acro pilot you see is in, in rate mode, in acro mode. They're not flying auto level. And if you want to do that stuff, you need to fly that way too. That's just how it is. So best just get started. How would you recommend learning acro? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I just happen, I just happen to have a playlist, how to fly a quadcopter or racing drone. And I have a series of lessons that you can work through. 24 lessons uh, using the FPV Freerider Simulator. Uh, it's free or $5 if you want to unlock the full thing, but you could use the free version. And uh, I, f I think it's a good series of lessons. The audio quality in some of them is, quite frankly, terrible, and for which I apologize. But the content is solid, I think, and I think it's a, this is a good uh, approach to learning to fly in acro mode. Uh, you will... S skele Skeletora, I think is your name. Yeah, you see a slight increase in oscillation when you take the HD cam off because the copter's lighter. It's tiny though. Maybe maybe a difference of as much as 0.5. Perhaps as much as 0.5 uh, on the pay, on the P gains, but not even I not even that much. If you have a slow wobble and none of the tuning has an effect. Are you in auto level mode? Are you in auto level mode? Crab X Corello 69. How can you hook up a spectrum radio to your computer? Uh, you can use a buddy box. You can get a USB stick that you plug your buddy box interface into the USB stick. And then it gets the channels from that. That's how you can do it. Anything is possible. Are you in auto level mode? Crabex Corello 69? That's my first question. Okay. When people talk about the copter feeling locked in, I think the number one thing, if I had to pick one thing that makes a copter feel locked in, it's having the P gains high enough. <clears throat> People talk about the rates, and the rates don't make the copter feel locked in. Um, the rates make the copter twitchy, right? But but not sort of locked in, and I'm not sure if I could explain it any better than that. Can I have it? No, nope, not if if you want to fly acro or like like steel and schizo and final glide, or if you want to race, no auto level. Turn the accelerometer off. Learn to fly in acro mode. It's not you can do it. It's not actually any harder, especially if you're flying FPV. Because when you're flying FPV, your reference point is the camera. And when you're in acro mode, 
the sticks always move the copter relative to the camera. So actually, if you're flying FPV, auto level mode, I think, is harder. So that's that's what I would say. Just just practice practice uh, in a simulator if you need to, but just learn to fly acro. Don't don't learn an auto level. You're just making life harder for you. <clears throat> exactly. All righty, Esoria, sluggish and not locked. So what I'm going to be looking for here, let's just look at the, the PIDs. Uh, I must be looking at the wrong file. Hold on. Ah, that's a shame. We have an old version of... Uh, Clean flight or beta flight, no PIDs for me to see. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to look at the traces. So let's start. I'm going to skip the gyros this time, and we're just going to look at the roll axis and get a sense of whether the P is too high or too low or where it's at. And I'm going to be looking for, well, first of all, let's just look at what the sticks are doing. Not a lot going on on the sticks. So you can't judge the tune. There's a roll. Can't judge the tune based on that, but here we go. Now notice here that instead of a bounce back, the gyro returns to zero and then goes back to moving. So this is a stutter. The gyro is slowing down, it stops. If the gyro now goes to the other side of the line, we're going back the other way. But instead what's happened is we've slowed down, stopped, and then kept going again, and that is maybe because the stick kept holding to the right. I don't see any oscillations or any, any real activity coming out. But that's maybe because you're not doing a lot just sort of looks like, doesn't look like you're really flying very much. Almost looks like you're hovering. Now we got a little punch out. Not a lot of maneuvers. Earlier in the chat, uh, somebody asked, what, uh, what set of maneuvers do you recommend for test flying? And again, I refer you to my practical PID tuning series where you can just watch me tune copters and see what I do. I find that a lot of what I do, I find that the defaults for beta flight, they fly really good if all, under a lot of series. Uh, of maneuvers, and I have to really work to bring out the limits of the tune. So what I'll do is I'll fly fast and then do a sharp 180 turn and go back the other direction. And normally when I do a sharp 180 turn, I'll drop the throttle, turn, let the copter stabilize a second, and then raise the throttle to go the other way. But if I'm really trying to bring out the limits of a tune, I'll go fast one way, turn and jam the throttle to go back the other way as fast as I can. And that'll really bring out oscillations and, and, and the limits of the tune. Um, I find that if I tune for that, and if I tune for a sharp stop at the end of a flip, like a snap flip or roll, I find that the copter flies really well the rest of the time. Those two maneuvers really bring out, for me, the limits of the tune. Now, if you're going to submit a log, I think full throttle punch outs, flips, rolls, like snap 180s, sharp pylon style turns, all of that stuff is good stuff that will bring out uh, the, the, the characteristics of the tune. Uh, all of those things are good. Uh, yeah, that's what I do too, Big Beard. Now, I did actually a series of landings today. I, if I knew where the video was, I'd show you. But I did, if you practice, you can hover and you can lower the throttle and you can bring the copter in until it touches down gently and air mode will not flip out. But in general, what I do is I just kill it. I wait till I'm an inch off the ground and just kill it, just disarm. That's how you land with air mode on. 
Uh, that's how, you, I don't know how you guys were landing the rest of the time. <laughs> you're like, what do you mean? You disarm as soon as you touch down? Yeah, obviously. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, so that's what I would say. You can land in Horizon if you feel like it. That's okay. No one's going to shame you for that. I agree that liftoff does not feel like how a real copter flies to me either. I think that... Um, FPV Freerider, the original one, actually, there's been an update to FPV Freerider that has uh, all kinds of fancy graphics, and I don't think it feels as realistic to me. I don't feel like liftoff feels realistic either, but you could still learn on liftoff if you wanted to. So there's not a lot going on in this trace, unfortunately. There's some full throttle stuff, uh, some flips and rolls. I, I, I think... If you're complaining about not feeling locked in, then you need to work the P gain up. That's where I would go. Um, and you need to be doing more aggressive moves to get that feel. It doesn't feel like you there are very many aggressive moves in that in that log at the very least. Strange twitch. Uh-oh. 52.2 and 103. Yeah, I have a feeling I know where this is going. Uh, liftoff or free... The thing is, I, I don't feel like liftoff's physics are that accurate. I'm not sure why. I just... It doesn't feel right to me. Um, liftoff is fun. It has a really nice track editor. It has a multiplayer mode that just came out. You can race against other people. Um, if you want if, if you wanted to learn to fly from scratch, I would say free rider and free rider is free. Um, I feel like liftoff feels more like a game to me, although you could also learn to fly on it if you wanted to. That's not the right file. What's the right file? Oh, it's a zip. I see. Uh, and we have a glitch happening at 10 as 52.2. Well, let's just go right there. Well, I don't see any. Let's just look at the gyros real quick. I was thinking I was going to see like a, a, a gyro glitch. But a gyro glitch would look like a sharp, sudden spike, and I do not see that. So that's good. Yeah, I haven't flown liftoff recently. It could have improved. There have been several uh, revs out since. So if we watch here, we can see the throttle is up. And as you raise the throttle, the back right motor goes to full. See that? And the roll gyro, so this is interesting. Notice that suddenly the roll gyro changes, even though the stick doesn't move. Watch the stick. Oh, was it, did the stick move? No, I don't think a stick moved. So the roll gyro, the copter suddenly rolled right or left, I'm not sure which, uh, even though the stick didn't move. Let's look at the motors. So the gyro goes positive. Let's look at the PIDs now. The gyro starts to go positive. The stick is centered, so the move is not commanded. Then the P-term goes negative. That's cor all correct. The P-term is going negative because it's opposing the gyro. Be and the gy it's opposing the gyro because 
the, the gyro is not being commanded, the gyro is moving and it's not being commanded to move by the sticks. So the copter is rolling, but the stick is centered. So the P term is trying to fix that. That's all correct. The P term is one of the three components of the PID controller. And if you want to know more about that, let's see if I can find it quickly. If you want to know more about the P, the I, and the D, I suggest this video. Uh, no, come on, Google. And now let's watch that video. No. <laughs> Here's a link to the video in the chat. Bruce uh, at RC Model Reviews does a fantastic job explaining what the P, the I, and the D are. So this is all correct. The question then is, why did the copter... So the, the question that... that uh, this Oh, dag nabbit. Hang on, go back there. Really? There we go. The question that Z particle asked was, why did that motor go to full? And that's not the right question. The answer to that question is, the motor went to full because the copter rolled right. It was not commanded to roll right. So the PID controller correctly raised the back right motor to fix the uncommanded motion. The question is, why was there an uncommanded motion? And did we fix the problem? What happens to the gyro? The motor goes to full and the gyro does come back down. So it fixed the problem, but the motor had to go to full to do it. Here's my theory. I'm going to give you a theory. My theory is that you've got a slipping prop. The prop slipped. The copter began to fall in the direction of the prop. The PID controller spun the motor faster. The prop caught, I don't know, and came back, and the copter started flying again. So the, 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 the next question to answer, and we're not going to be able to answer this question here on the live stream, is why did the copter roll to the side like that? If it was a slipping prop, then it would be the same thing at 103.6. Let's see if it was. Ah, <clears throat> oh, phooey. Ah, phooey. No, now it's the back left motor. So the other, the other thing is that you could have an issue with top-end throttle calibration. Um, you want to take a look at my channel. I have a video. Top-end throttle calibration. Uh, right here. Clean Flight BL Heli top-end throttle calibration. Uh, so if you check out that video, I'll talk more about that. I notice that this is always happening when you go to full throttle, and that's why I think maybe top-end throttle calibration is the issue. So you could certainly look into that as well. Um, is BL Heli S as reliable as BL Heli? That's an interesting question. Uh, BL Heli S is new, and so there are kinks to work out. Um, I think that if you wanted a dead reliable copter, I would probably get an F390 ESC uh, just to be absolutely sure that you've got three months of market time to work the kinks out. Uh, BL Heli S are, are good. Uh, I always ask uh, Quad McFly what ESCs he recommends, and he consistently goes back to, and by the way, he hedges the answer. He says, well, what are you trying to do? There's no one best ESC, so credit to him for that. But then when I press him on it, he consistently recommends the Acon Bolt Light 30 amp ESC. I suggest you get them from Buddy RC rather than Ready to Fly Quads, because Buddy RC has good customer service and support, and Ready to Fly Quads has none. Your call. Um, but he consistently recommends the Acon Bolt Light ESC uh, as a very, very good one. Is that a, that's not even an S, a BL Heli S ESC, actually. Uh, as far as a BL Heli S ESC, I don't know uh, what, what the sort of best one of those would be. The DYS XS20 has come out. DYS has a, a pretty good track record recently, so certainly maybe that one. But you never know with a new product whether there's going to be some glitch that renders it terrible. Okay, so Z-Particle, to sum up, 
Your copter is roll. I, I since it's not going the same direction every time. I I would check out top end throttle calibration. That's what I think I would look at. Uh, it's always happening when you're at full throttle. So one of the all the motors come up, and one of the motors gets to full throttle first, and then the others just sort of stay down. You know, whichever one happens to get there first, or maybe it's making slightly more, slightly less thrust than the others. So it goes to full, and the others sort of waver around underneath it. That's completely normal. Uh, F390, F396, that's all the same thing. I think actually the F396 it, it, is, is what they all are. Um, but you just say F330, F390, you know. Uh, I'm not sure that there's a difference. I'm not sure what the difference is, if there is one. Okay. If your motors are warm, you need to either reduce your degain or filter more. That's the answer. Or or if your motors are warm because it's 100 degrees, then there, you know, there's nothing to do about that. All righty, let's have a look. That may take a minute to download. So, let's see. Aggressive flat spins. All the motors cut out. All four motors cut out. That's pretty weird. Um, sometimes what happens is that your min throttle is too low. So when you do an aggressive move, two of the motors spin up and two of the motors spin down. And the ones that spin down, spin down enough that they stop and the copter falls. Um, that's probably, I mean, if all the motors are stopping, that's not, you know, uh, equ equipment selection issue. That's a, you've, you've built it wrong in some way. You, you've made some mistake in the configuration or the building that's resulting in that. Um, that's not a tuning issue. It's a, it's a maintenance issue, if you will. So, uh, no, I don't think you should rebuild the copter. I think you should find a friend or someone who, who knows. No problem, RC Flyer. Someone who knows how to build and troubleshoot. And if you live in a place where you just don't have anybody you can rely on, that, that sucks. It really sucks. That's too bad. But... Um, if you can find somebody who can look at the copter and help you, you'll solve the problem a lot faster than if you're trying to solve it over the internet, where it's just a lot slower to solve problems that way. Could be if, if are you sure that all four motors are stopping? Because there's very few things will cause that. Um, if, are you losing power? Do you hear the ESCs reinitialize? Are you disarming? Oh, good one. Are you disarming? Accidentally going throttle down yaw left and disarming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how do you check P on yaw? The thing about yaw is you're not going to get oscillations on yaw when P gets too high, probably, because the yaw axis is relatively weak compared to the pitch and roll. So it takes a really amazing copter to get enough yaw authority to actually see visible oscillations with the excess yaw P gain. Excess yaw P gain usually manifests similar to noise. You'll get a general sort of uh, unsteadiness in the copter the motors will sound rough and then you look at black box and you see that the black box is just through the roof on the yaw axis um, that's how you check it yeah try switch arming um, I, I think that's a good suggestion if all four are I don't I don't stick arm so I wouldn't have thought of that so thank you for that um, if all four motors are stopping then you're either losing power you're losing your flight controller is rebooting or you could be you could be disarming. If it only does it on a left yaw, but not a right yaw, that's that's probably disarming. I recommend if you're new to the hobby that you learn to switch arm. I think switch arming is better, and since this is my live stream, I'll just go with that. I know some people disagree, but I think that the people who stick arm mostly stick arm because that's what they learned to do back in the day, and they don't want to switch. And there's something to that. If your muscle memory for disarming is down to the left, down to the left, then it, there's a safety issue with you trying to switch to switch arming. I get that. That's that's legit. But if you're new to the hobby, 
you don't have a four channel. Even the cheapest, the FlySky transmitter has six channels. So you can dedicate a channel to arming and learn switch arming. And I think switch arming is better because you flip the switch and you're armed, you flip the switch and you're disarmed. Isn't that better than this crazy, oh, I'm gonna down into the left thing with the stick. Am I armed? Am I disarmed? I don't know. If I got my finger on that switch and it's in the disarmed position, I'm disarmed, period. I can hold my finger on that switch and I know that I'm disarmed and I'm gonna stay disarmed. I learned this from fixed wings where it's a throttle cut switch. And when you land, you flip it off and you hold your finger on that switch until you unplug the battery. You know you're safe. That feels good to me. Um, yeah, and then you don't run into issues like this where you're accidentally disarming in flight. Why no yaw at min throttle? Because, because you have to input the stick command to disarm, right? So if you're going to disarm the copter, the yaw axis has to be disabled. Otherwise, every time you disarm, the copter would go, right? It would become a blender. So if you switch arm, then you can have yaw at min throttle. Isn't that nice? Yes, I think so. Yeah, Peter Jones, but the yaw axis is not going to manifest noise the same as the others because of the lack of authority. So you're right, but I wouldn't compare them, you know, directly apples to apples. Okay, so we've got this one. We're going to look at RC Flyer. RC Flyer is in the chat, so this will be a real-time thing. And you can comment on my suggestions. One more. RC Flyer, did you give me a sync? No. All right, well, I'm going to sync this up. Or maybe you edited the video, perhaps. Let's find out. There's our beep. Hold on. It's not too hard to sync it up, by the way. That's pretty good. Okay, we got the sink. Now what are we doing here? If you have play in the nose on throttle ups, and what you mean is that when you throttle up, the copter probably pitches forward, and when you chop the throttle, the copter pitches back. I raise the eye gain for that. I'm going to raise the eye. But here's the thing. The P term and the I term, uh, they, they work together. They're partners. They're not independent. Okay, and the way I like to think of it is that the P term is cleaning up the mess. The mess is the error, okay? Error is the difference between what the copter is doing and what you're telling it to do. Okay, so you input a stick command. You tell the copter, roll left. The copter isn't rolling left. There's error now. The P term cleans up the error by making the motors go up and down to make the copter do what you're telling it to do. But the P term is not perfect, okay? The P term leaves some mess behind, but the P term hasn't got time for that. The P term is moving on. It's moving on. Uh, so anytime there's some error left behind by the P term, the I term's job is to kind of come behind it and pick up that error. And, and the I term is like the memory of the PID loop. The I term says, hey, P term, you forgot this. You didn't clean up this error. P term's like, forget it. I'm cleaning up this error right in front of me. Now, I terms like, yeah, but you're going too fast. You're doing a sloppy job. I'll get it. Okay, I've anthropomorphized the pit loop a little too much. So if the P term, if the P gain is low, there will be lots of leftover error that the P term doesn't correct. And the I, you'll need higher I gain to, to compensate for that. So if you've got pitch movement when you raise and lower the throttle, the first thing to do is to make sure that your P gain is high enough. If your P gain is in the ballpark of high enough, then raise your I gain. But if you've got ultra low P gain, then the first thing to do is not raise your I gain, but to raise your P gain, okay? The P term should be the first line of defense against error, and the I term picks up the error that it doesn't, that it's just not able to get, okay? Uh, RC Addict uh, says, the nose moves slightly upon high throttle changes, even with high I, but I don't want to induce more P oscillations and prop wash, yeah. So there, you may not be able to get it perfect. Lots of people don't like to fly with ultra high eye gain because it makes the copter feel, perhaps you could say stiff, whereas a copter with low eye gain is going to feel a little looser is a one way of putting it. And lots of people don't like that ultra stiff feel. If the eye gets high enough, it, will, it can even bring out oscillations, as I learned 
the hard way when I was making one of my practical PID tuning videos, I raised I to like 90. And I expected the copter to feel really stiff, but it actually got oscillations. I was, I've never seen such a thing. But um, so let's take a look at your gains here. So your I is 40. With an I of 40, I would not hesitate to raise that uh, to at least perhaps 60 or 65 before I started thinking maybe it was too high in, in order to get the nose to stay steady. I hate it. I hate it when I change the throttle and the nose dips or raises. I, that, that takes me out of the flow. When I'm watching a video and I see it or when I'm flying and I see it, it takes me out of the flow so much. I really want the copter to be very steady and smooth and and so I'll raise the eye to 50, 60, 65, not much higher than that usually to get the, the nose to hold on throttle changes. Um, is it 58? Uh, am I looking at the right file? This is IROC 1985. Is that you, RC Addict? No, RC Flyer. Sorry, RC Addict, not you. Um, I, may have got the, I may have got two people confused. So on this copter anyway, I is 40, and I would take it up if, if that was an issue. Maybe we're talking about two different things, though. No, see, playing the nose on throttle ups. Okay, I'm not confused. Let's look. What happened there? Flight mode horizon. Okay, fine. Dead steady here. You jammed that throttle. The nose stayed dead steady, didn't it? Let's watch again. Little movement. See, I would have liked to have seen you chop the throttle there without pushing forward, just to see if the nose stayed steady again. But okay, whatever. Very nice. See, right there, that's a great example. I would raise the eye gain absolutely on this copter. Watch what the nose does during these throttle punches. That's classic for me that, that the pitch eye gain needs to come up. See how it goes up and down, up and down when you jam the throttle like that? I would raise, I would raise your pitch eye gain to 50 or 55 immediately. All right, so that's that. Now, let's see what happened there. This is a pretty extreme move. Do we have bounce? We do have bounce back. It's such a fast move. I wonder if you can even see the bounce back. Let's watch it. Hard to tell. That, that gray ground isn't very... It doesn't have a lot of landmarks for me to see whether we got bounce back. I don't think we need the motors. <coughs> Pardon me. Here. Ooh, what happened there? Fred, are you, are you asking me? Oh, well, Fred, since you asked, I do have a Patreon account. It is the Drone Racing Engineer. I'll post the link here if you're interested. And uh, as I always, as, as they say on NPR, you know, uh, even uh, even a dollar or two certainly does add up. Uh, I like to say I have I have eleven thousand, almost twelve thousand subscribers to my YouTube channel now. If every single one of them was subscribed to Patreon at the one, even the one dollar level, I would I could do this full time as a job and have. <laughs> I, I if, if even half of them did, I could almost do this full time. But uh, if all of them did, it would be pretty easy to make that decision. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in supporting me and this, by the way, and I'm not going to talk for hours and hours about my Patreon because I don't, don't want to seem greedy, but if you guys are interested in supporting me, this is really is the best way to do it. The YouTube ads, they, they add up, but they add up because there are tens of thousands of views. Each individual view is fractions of a cent. And so if you're interested in supporting me, if you just go and do a dollar subscription on Patreon you are giving me 20 times more in a month than I would get from you if you just watched YouTube videos with the ads on or off. Obviously, I don't, you know, whatever you feel like doing is, I don't care. But if you're curious, I was surprised. I once said to a guy whose channel I watch, I said, hey, I'm going to, I want to support you on Patreon. If I wanted to have my ad blocker turned on guilt-free, 
what, how much would that would I need to do to cover that? And he said, listen, dude, even a, a dollar, that's more that I'm going to get from you. So just do it. So I was surprised to hear that the ad revenue from each individual subscriber was actually that small. Okay. So we are seeing a little bounce there. A little bounce. A little bit of a bigger bounce on the on the pitch axis than on the roll axis. Interesting. Oh, beautiful yaw spin. Wow, that was gorgeous. I wish I could do that. I can't do yaw spins yet. I'm going to get them, but that was beautiful. Let's watch that again. Oh, Woo, that was good. That's a good move. You got that down. So here's the deal. Uh, the big things I see are the pitch coupling of the throttle and then the bounce back at the end of the flips and rolls. I haven't seen any prop wash yet, although you say you got prop wash. I'm sure you can bring it out. The, the flips and rolls, it feels to me like, if anything, the copter is slightly undertuned. In other words, the P is a little low. It just feels that way. Um, I'm not seeing any sort of, pardon me, P-term oscillations coming out. If I don't ever see oscillations coming out, I think your P is at least a little low. Like I like to say, if a race car driver is going around the track and I don't hear the tires squealing a little bit, then he's not going fast enough. And that's how I feel about the P term. So it feels to me like you're a little undertuned and here you are, basically you're at defaults. So I would start working, roll and pitch P up, leave D where it is, raise the pitch I to 50 or 55. Just get that out of the way, get that locked in. But as you raise P a little bit, you'll need less I to hold that. So maybe wait on the I until you get the P tuned in. But yeah, work those up. Your copter's flying really good, so don't screw it up. Although you can always just go back to defaults, right? So you're not going to lose anything. But yeah, definitely work those up and, and do the flips and rolls. So raise the roll from 4.5. Let's say, let's say we raise it to six, okay? Because I like to try to bound myself. I like to say here, I know it's not good. And now I'm going to, I'm going to go up. I'm not going to raise it a little bit. I'm going to raise it a lot and see if it gets better or worse. And if I raise it a lot and it gets way worse, now okay, okay, and no, now the answer is somewhere in here. And then I'm going to search in that in that realm. So let's say you take your roll P from 4.5 to 6 and you do another another flip and see what happens. Does the bounce back get smaller or does it get more does it instead of going ba boom, does it go ba 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 ba? Okay, then you've gone too far. So then you can work it, right? But if you go from 4.5 to 6 on roll and the bounce back at the end of the roll gets smaller, aha, now you know you've done something, you've improved it. If you can't find somewhere around 4.5, 5, 6 that fixes that, then you can start working D, right? Find the point of P where that bounce back is the best you can possibly get it and then work D up as well to see, to see if you can make it even better. And then do the same thing on pitch with the flips. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for that submission, uh, uh, RC Flyer eighty five or IROC nineteen eighty five, whichever you are. How does it look so level without roll? Uh, there had to be coordination on that move, right? There had to be. I'm not going to go back and look, but. It had to be coordination with roll and yaw. If you want to make a one-time donation, there's a couple ways you can do it. Number one, you can just PayPal. I think it is... Is it that? Hang on. You can just use PayPal.me to send me money if you care to. That's fine. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can sign up. You can let your charge your card get charged one time. Then you can just cancel. That's an easy way to do it. But no, Patreon doesn't, I don't think, let you ne normally do one-time donations. The whole idea with Patreon is that is that a creator can have sort of a, a, a... They can know where their next check is coming from. 
in a, in, in a way that, so Patreon really wants you to do recurring, but that's, whatever you want to do is obviously fine with me. That doesn't seem possible. If you have up tilt, you have to coordinate yaw and roll. Obviously, we, we saw the black box do what it did. Yeah, thank you, absolutely. Uh, RC Flyer 85, is is that your, tr is, I, I still am confused, RC Flyer. Is that your video we were watching? And if so, then I'll ask you a question. He said, nothing other than yaw. Well, then you tell me. I mean, we all know that in order to coordinate turns with camera up tilt, you have to have roll and yaw. So how are you doing that with nothing other than yaw if there's up tilt? What's the secret? This is a mystery. I mean, that explains how the move was so clean. If it was just yaw somehow, then that, yeah, that makes sense. Whenever I'm inverted and I try and do a yaw spin, if I don't also coordinate with roll, the copter just turns over. Maybe. Oh, interesting. Maybe you were actually flat. Interesting. In other words, the idea, I think what we're proposing here is that we're imagining that he was inverted like this, right? The camera is level with the horizon, and if you were like this, then you would have to coordinate with pitch, with yaw and roll to keep the horizon flat. But what you're proposing is that you're actually flat like this, and the wide angle lens made you look more level than you really were. If you were flat like this and you just do yaw, then obviously the copter will just yaw. Maybe so. Yeah, that has to be it. Can you move P on a slider? You mean you mean you mean in-flight adjustments? I think but yes, you can do in-flight adjustments, but not on a slider. You you flip a switch up or down, and then and the number goes bip 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 up or bip 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 down. All right, here's Daishi XSI. Weird mini oscillations. D is freaking out. Well, since you gave me a screenshot, let's take a look. Okay, these, what you're seeing here, this is completely normal. This is probably an artifact of your sampling rate. In other words, if you have a low uh, black box rate, then your sampling rate is low and you're going to get aliasing. So there's a very good chance that when you see this on the D term, that's not actually there. It, uh, that's just a sampling thing. But if, if you're sampling at a high rate, like one kilohertz or two kilohertz or higher, then I still don't think you should worry about it. It usually happens at low throttle and it's very low magnitude. And it's just not, I think it's just to be ignored. There's, I don't think there's anything you can really do about it. It's some kind of resonance in the motors or the frame that is imposing itself on the gyro. And as soon as you throttle up, it goes away. So I don't really think you should worry about that at all. Um, but if you're sampling, so I don't see any indication here of what your sampling rate is. But if you're sampling at less than, let's say, 2 kilohertz, then it's probably just aliasing and I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, Eric, that's a, that's a good question. I do mean to do that video, although I don't know if I'm going to get it done. I'm sure that I'm not going to get it done before I go out of town tomorrow. I'm leaving, leaving town tomorrow, but I will show you guys. I've been playing with this because I thought I should do some in-flight adjustments because people always ask about that. And I usually tune with a laptop because I want to know the numbers, but at the same time, it is nice with in-flight adjustments to be able to just, you know, do it in the air. So I've been playing with this. Check this out. So this setup lets me tune pitch, P-I-D, roll, P-I-D, and yaw, P-I-D, using just two aux channels. How do you like that? And I'm going to do a video showing how to set this up, but I don't have that done now. And it probably won't be till you know, the next, next weekend or whatever that I'll shoot it. So eh, for now, you'll just have to, uh, just have to wait or use other resources. 
Yeah, so Daishi, let me close up here. I haven't even really looked at your log, but what you're seeing here, it's probably aliasing from your sampling rate or some kind of low magnitude, uh, low magnitude like resonance or harmonic or something. It's almost always when you're at low throttle in my experience. And as soon as you throttle up, the motors, when the RPMs go up, all of that low, re low uh, frequency or mid frequency noise moves away and it goes away. So I wouldn't worry about it at all. It's not affecting anything. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. You joke, but Black Box was how I got quote unquote famous. That was my key into the glamorous world of, uh, of, of FPV acro flight was doing black box log analysis. If the motors are hot, then you got to filter more. There's so here's the thing. If your motors are hot, you have too much noise. Noise feeds into the D term. The D term amplifies noise. The motors get hot. That's the gist of it. So if you have hot motors, what can you do? You can reduce your D gain. You can filter more, which gets rid of the noise in software, or you can get rid of the noise by balancing your props, finding your, your bad motor or whatever. So if you've got hot motors, even with filtering and reduced degain, then the next thing to do is to look at the vibration level of the motors. And I suggest this video, how much vibration is normal which shows you how, do I, how I vibration test my motors and, and what the sort of good range is for vibration on a motor. So let's take a look then at your black box and see if that uh, pans out. Oh, good point, Jeremy. Very good point. If you have hot motors, it can also be that your motor screws are too long and they're touching the motor windings and they're shorting to ground. You can easily smoke a motor or an ESC this way. Uh, yeah, your motor, your motor screws should only go like a millimeter maybe uh, past the bottom of the, the arm. Uh, much more than that, and they can touch the windings. It depends very much on your actual motors. Some motors have more clearance on the bottom than others. Did I download this? I thought I did. There we go. So let's take a look at the gyro. So... Well, your yaw gyro is crazy. Do you see this on the yaw gyro? Your pitch and your roll gyro are very thin, probably because you're filtering a lot. Where's your filter at? Gyro is at 100. D term's at 100. That's not a lot of filtering. Okay, so you're not filtering a lot, at least not in this one. But your yaw gyro is going crazy, and usually that means excess P gain on yaw. Let's see if that turns out to be right. So the yaw gyro can make hot motors. Excess P gain on yaw will often manifest similar to just general noise. Yeah, see, we got it going nutso here. So it's not as easy to see when we're zoomed in, but when we zoom out, we can see all of this, the yaw gyro, uh, the, the P term on yaw is going crazy. So you got a chicken and the egg scenario here though. D is your yaw P gain excessive? You're at defaults, essentially. And that's resulting in the gyro flipping out or vice versa. The way to tell is to lower the yaw P gain to something very low, like maybe four. And if you still see this crazy noise, then you have a mechanical issue that's resulting in noise on the yaw axis, okay? On the other hand, if you lower the yaw P gain and it cleans up, then you just know you need a lower yaw P gain and that's, that's your fix. 
So I'm not 100% sure that this would cause hot motors, but anytime you've got a P-term swinging around like this, it can make the motors twitch. It's more the D-term that does it than the P-term, but on yaw, the P-term can do it too. I don't see anything untoward here on the roll axis. Notice, you guys, that the, the, do you know how some of the other files we've looked at tonight, the, the P term is basically always like really close to the axis. Do you see how here the P term is kind of moving around? The red line is the P term. It's going up, it's going down, it's working. And you're not even doing anything too radical with the throttle, right? The throttle is pretty steady, you know, so the copter is not even swinging around that radically. But the P-term is sort of going up and down and working. That's that's a sign that you're in the ballpark of correct on the P-gain. Yeah, so the number one thing I see here is that the yaw axis is really noisy. So lower yaw P-gain, see if the yaw axis cleans up. And if it doesn't clean up, then you have a mechanical issue you need to solve. You need to start looking at your motors. Yeah, good point. I mean, you can test it with a multimeter, right? Test it with a multimeter, and that'll tell you the answer. You test it with a multimeter, by the way. What I mean by that is touch the screw with one end of the multimeter and touch the... Oh, they're covered up here. Hold on. I don't think I have one where they're not covered up. Touch the motor pad on the ESC and touch all three. And if any of the three motor pads has con continuity to the screws, that you have a short. <clears throat> oh, very nice. I'm known by name in Melbourne and Sydney. Thank you. That's very... A friend of mine... <laughs> I had a little celebrity moment. A friend of mine... Okay, so this is my wife's friend's husband. You got that? He was visiting a friend of his who lives out of out of the country. And he said to his friend, his friend was complaining about how expensive it is to fly uh, quadcopters. And he said, oh, yeah, I know this guy. He has a YouTube channel. You should get a YouTube channel. He gets all this stuff for free. And the guy knew me. He knew my channel and he knew my name. I was like, well, how about that? My wife's friend's husband's friend knew me. Oh, there you go. How about that? Let's take a look at your video. Uh, even though there's loud audio, let's take, you submitted the video, so it's the least I can do. Let's just take a quick look at it. And I'll try to make sure I turn down. Let me turn the audio off for a minute and make sure I turn the audio down before I broadcast and kill your ears. Okay. I have no idea what's happening here. Yeah, do you hear the motors surging? Yee, 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 yee. And you see all this jello in the camera? I, I can't be sure, but I think that's your yaw axis. Or the video angle's off. Okay, that explains it. Uh, yeah, so I think it's your yaw axis. Yeah. Until you clean up the yaw axis, I won't be able to be sure that there isn't something else going on. So that's what I would say there. All right, well, since you're here, let me know. Anything else? The buzzer should be 5 volts. But here's the thing. You hook the buzzer up to the positive line. With the, with the buzzer, the negative is switched. The positive is whatever you put it on. So what I always do with my X racer is I don't use the battery pad. Well, some on some of them I do. But the battery, the positive should be 5 volts for the buzzer, not 3.3. So that's not right. But you could just wire the buzzer positive to any 5-volt source you prefer. 
and then the negative is switched, the ground is switched. So that's, that's a nice tip there. Yeah, the positive should be 5, not 3.3. .3. I've never checked it with a voltmeter, but uh, that's how it is on every other uh, copter or flight control board I've ever seen. How many have we done? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here comes number 9, 2021. Yeah, I saw this one. If you turn 360 in yaw, you should end up at the same place that you started. That's true. So if you turn 360 in yaw and you don't end up back where you started, then your copter is destabilized somehow and is not flying right. However, yaw is very hard on your... It's very hard for your copter to yaw quickly because the copter lacks yaw authority because it's using counter torque, not thrust to generate the yaw. The other thing is that while the copter is yawing, so two of the motors are spinning as fast as they can and two of the motors have slowed down to idle. At the same time, the copter has to balance itself on the pitch and roll axis. This is very, very hard. So if you're doing yaw pirouettes and your copter is getting destabilized, first of all, you may just be trying to yaw too fast. Your copter can only yaw so fast before it gets destabilized. And the more aggressively you enter the yaw move, the worse it's gonna be, okay? So if you bang the stick over, boom, the copter yaws, you may get destabilized. Whereas if you gently enter the yaw move, you may be able to get to full stick deflection and the copter is spinning like a, like a blender and, and do okay. The other thing to keep in mind is you may see pilots do these yaw pirouettes, right? Where they go past an obstacle and they go, Zoom, right? But the thing to keep in mind is that with up tilt, that's not purely a yaw move, okay? So they're going like this, and they go zoom, but that's, lar that's got a lot of roll mixed in there. They're not flat, and they may not be able to pirouette that fast. So if you're destabilized on yaw, probably, probably you, you may just need to slow down your yaw rate. Let's take a look at the video. Nice to see you, Vs. Thanks for stopping by. RC Addict, you were, you were, tw well, which one were you, RC Addict? Remind me. Check the audio here. I see what you're talking about. That's not a particularly fast yard. Right? That's, that one looked fine. That one looked like you came back about where you were. Hard to judge that one. Let's take a look at your black box. Twenty thirty. All right, RC addict. Since you're here and you're waiting, we'll do you next. I'll will skip the line. Is anyone else in the chat room between twenty twenty one? Let's see. Twenty twenty two is Larock. Twenty 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 thirty two is Nick seven seventy nine. Are either of you guys here? Because if you're not here, I'll skip you and I'll do RC addict. You've been waiting. I how could I stop without without getting to you? Um, if you guys are here, then I won't skip you. Speak, speak now or speak in a few minutes because I'm going to be doing this for a minute. So, um, yeah, no, this is. This is not going to be an issue that you're going to solve with P-term or I-term. or This is less a tuning issue and more a sort of a, a physical constraints of, of physics. Oh, Nick, I think 
Yeah, no, I see, Nick. We already looked at yours, so um, I may need to bump you ahead. Um, who am I looking at here? Okay. Let's sync you up first. Not even close. That's pretty close. Hang on. Uh-oh. Uh Have I got the right file? 71245. I don't... 9.52, you say? All right. 9 point... No, something isn't right at all. 9.52... That's not right. Oh, I see. Oh, it is right. There you go. Yeah, okay. All right, let's have a look. So the first thing I'm going to look at, and I said before, whenever you have uncommanded motion, whenever you have unwanted motion of the copter, check the sticks to see if you're commanding the motion by accident. That's the first thing to do. I don't think... Uh, So let's look at the gyros, and let's look at RC command. And now let's go to the, well, hang on. Now let's go to the point where the move was. Okay, so what happened there? We see the yaw stick go left. Oh, that's the throttle, I'm sorry. The yaw stick goes left, that's the yellow. Okay, Larock is here. We'll do. The yaw stick goes left. The pitch and roll are completely centered. We're good to go there. Okay, so you did not command, you did not bump the stick or do anything crazy. Notice that the these two motors are completely idled. Now, yaw goes up. Now, we should see that these two are relatively flat. Where do we lose it? Let me put the playback speed a little slower. Where's the point where we lose it? There. Right there. Boom. What happened there? This motor came in all of a sudden and that's what flipped you out. Let's look at the motors. So you didn't command it. What did the motors do? Boom. What happened? Why did that motor flip out? It came on slowly. And then here you end the move and everything comes back. <clears throat> Why did that motor flip out? Well, if the motors are moving, the PID loop is commanding them to move. So let's look at your PIDs. Let's start with your yaw PIDs. You can see here the P line is just flat. Nothing happened on the yaw axis to cause this motor to twitch like this. So let's look at a different axis. Let's look at the roll axis. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. The P is just flat. So that only leaves one axis. We better see something happening here. Please, no. Wow. So I got, I'm confused. I'm really confused. Um, uh, no, LaRocca, you're here. I'm not going to skip you. No, no, it's fine. Uh, I'm confused about this one. We can see the motors twitch, and that is that is that happened. We can hear and, and see the effect of that happening. 
the motors are twitching, which must mean that a P, one of the PID terms changed. The motors respond to the output of the PID loop. If, if the motors are twitching, then one of the three axes must have twitched the, P, the PID sum. Let's look at the PID sum. Okay, maybe, maybe there's something I'm missing. The PID sum is ultimately what drives the motors. So, nothing. How? I'm stumped. I'm stumped, you guys. I'm totally stumped. If the motors twitched that strong, there has to have been something that happened on one of the three PID sums. Well, they may not all twitch at the same... The, the motors... First of all, the motors don't all twitch at the same time. Uh, so what seems to happen is that motor number four comes back in from idle and twitches. And then the other two twitch as well. So let's think this through. You might say, well, maybe this was some kind of a desync or something. Uh, it's something in the motors. The motor twitched. But no, the motor didn't just twitch. The flight controller commanded the motor to twitch. Because we can see the motor output here from the flight controller. Was it wind? It can't. The th if there's wind or a bird strike or you hit a branch, what happens is that the gyro goes blip and the PIDs counteract that. Does the gyro, the gyro it didn't twitch. We looked at the gyro, the gyro doesn't twitch. So if there's no twitch in the gyro and there's no twitch in the PID sum, then I don't know how there can be a twitch like this in the motors. I'm complete, that, that defies my fundamental understanding of how the copter's internal logic works. I got nothing. I got nothing. Was uh, that's an interesting question, Chai Stai. Uh, is signal ground hooked up? But again, this is what's coming out of the flight controller. So if the flight, if if we if we had corruption of the signal on the wire, then the flight controller would be sending normal data, and that's what we would see in the black box. But then there would be corruption after it comes out of the motor headers. So that's not what this is. I got nothing. I'm sorry, I got nothing. I'm completely stumped. This just shouldn't be possible, and it clearly is. So I'm afraid you've got me on that one. I don't know the answer. We should see the gyro move, or we should see the pid sum move, similar to what we're seeing on the motors, and we just don't see any of that. But here, I'm going to give you an answer anyway. Raise your min throttle. <laughs> Raise your min throttle. Or are you using idle up? Maybe raise your min throttle. Because we can see these motors are going to idle. And 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 maybe maybe your min throttle is too low and a motor is stuttering. That's just the a, a shot in the dark. Check the second yaw. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Same thing. We got this twitch here when this motor comes back in. But why is there this crazy twitch? Yeah. The second one actually I think looked okay. It seems to happen. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, raise your min throttle. Whenever you have weird problems and you're at low throttle or a, or, or a motor is going to idle and the copter is kind of dropping an arm or twitching, at least try raising your min throttle. If your min throttle is too low, the motor will stop in flight. I don't know why we don't see the PID sum compensating for that, but it's at least worth a try. Okay. All right, we're going to do two more, and then we're going to call it. This is going to be a long one. Laroc is here asking for tuning advice. Lorac wants to know what I would recommend. Um, I am, a, I'm a hopefully soon, if UPS uh, comes through for me, going to take delivery of some Bolt 1300s from Hobby King. Uh, I went back and forth. First of all, high volts, yes, absolutely. I, I'm sold on high volts. They perform better. It's still an open question whether the lifespan is as good. 
But as far as flight performance goes, high volts all the way. I'm committed to them. I, I, they just fly better. They get more power, better, just better. Okay, so high volts, yes. Uh, so then the question is what to buy. And I went back and forth. In my testing, the three, if I had to pick three best ones in my testing, were the Reeve Electrics Silver Blend 435, the Lumineer, uh, whatever, high volt, and the Bolt was, if it wasn't one of the, if it wasn't like number three, it was it was well up there. The Bolts did very well. Uh, so I'm not sure it was exactly number three, but it was definitely up there. And um, I went back and forth and Lumineer, I really wanted to buy Lumineer, but they're like, they're, they're like 35 bucks a battery. And the Bolt batteries are more like 20 to 23, 23 or something. And I have a friend who flies, he has like 10 Bolt High Volt 1300s. And he's had them for a while. They, they're doing okay. Um, you know, they, they, they haven't like crapped out on him after 20 flights. So I felt okay about that. I went back and forth and decided that for the price of the Bolt, the Lumineer performs a little better. But the, if I'm going to buy, I bought, wanted to buy like 12. And the price difference between the, the Bolt and the Lumineer just tipped me towards the Bolt. The Reeve Electrics is an interesting one. The Reeve Electrics is by all, as far as I can tell, it's a really freaking good battery. And Reeve Electrics is also, they know their stuff when it comes to batteries, as far as I can tell. And I'm not an expert, but I, I have a feeling they know their stuff. Uh, but the problem with Reeve, Reeve Electrics is they don't have a U.S. distributor that I am aware of. And so you got to pay crazy shipping to get the batteries. So the batteries are only like 20 bucks, but then you pay like eight or 12 bucks shipping or something, you end up paying close 30, 35 bucks a battery for the Reeve Electrics. It puts them in the same league as the Lumineer. And the they, they definitely are as good or better than the Lumineer. Absolutely. But again, I just, they, they priced themselves out for me. So that's what I would say. SMC, I fly SMC 37 amp true spec. If you're going to buy a non-high volt, the SMC is a solid choice. There are people who say the SMC is like, whoa, it's so good. I can't believe it. I feel like the SMC is a solid choice. It doesn't like knock my socks off, but it's not bad either. And it's a good price. Yep, the 1300 and the 1800s are both good. Bolts are, I think Bol Hobby King, Hobby King has a reputation in the industry and it's not a reputation as a top tier boutique brand likes like Lumineer, for example, right? You pay a lot for a Lumineer product, but you're getting this crazy good boutique product, right? And they see the same thing in the batteries with the with the Tattoo or the Dynagy, whatever your favorite brand is. Hobby King Bolt batteries are really very good batteries at a great price. And I think they deserve more respect uh, in the industry than they get. I really, I really feel that way. <clears throat> Best flight controller. X Racer F three hundred three V three point one. What what doesn't it have that you want? <laughs> it doesn't have anything that well. Onboard SD card reader. FBV model. Listen up. Onboard SD card reader. I would like that. Uh, here are some other interesting ones that are out there. Multi rotor mania MRM Mantis. It's twenty five bucks. It only will do four K. It won't do eight K. But it's a really really smartly designed board. It's got a Spectrum satellite port for you Spectrum users. Solid board, only 25 bucks. The MRM Mantis, Multirotor Mania Mantis, good choice. There are a few other things coming soon that I can't show you or talk to you about, but they're also going to be exciting, but I can't tell you about them yet. But those are great choices today, uh, absolutely. I have an Attitude V2 goggle. And uh, I keep thinking that maybe I'd like to get a Dominator V3, uh, Dominator HD, HD2, but I, I like the smaller screen and the attitude too much. Um, okay, let's do Lorac. We're going to skip Nick because we already did one of Nick's. And then 2022, 2032 is going to be... No, that's Nick. 2033 is going to be RC Addict, and then we're going to call it.
So we're just looking for tuning advice. The thing with the Dominator is the Dominator V3 has the widescreen, which I can't decide if that would bother me. And then the Dominator HD2 is awesome, but I tried them and the screens are so big, I kind of don't like it. Like it's hard to read the OSD because you have to like look down to read the OSD. I don't know. I'm sure I get used to it. The other thing is that with the HD2, I tried someone at the flight field who had them and I've had blurry edge of the blurry edge of the screen. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, take a look at your black box log but while your video is downloading. Let's start with your gyros. Zoom all the way out. Right here, your pitch gyro is getting a little noisy. The thickness of the line, again, is what I'm looking at. I don't think it's a problem, but that's getting on the edge of about as noisy as I'd like to see. Everything else looks okay. This actually looks pretty good. Uh, I've started to look for the lines to not actually be super pencil thin. It almost feels like when they're super pencil thin, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's too filtered and maybe not uh, as good. Uh, I do have diopters just because of my eyes. I, I fly with a minus, I don't remember what I fly with, a minus four diopter, maybe minus six. I, I normally, I have a minus five to, five, seven, five to six diopters. So I'm probably flying with a minus six diopters already in my attitudes. Yeah, you didn't notice the 16.9? Meh, maybe so. Yeah, but the thing is, why would I not just stick with my V2s, my Attitude V2s then? Why buy anything? That's the thing. I just wish that I had the, um, the V2 doesn't have the module bay like the, like the v Attitude V3 and the Dominators do. So I don't have an option to try any of these cool diversity things. Let's take a look at your roll axis first. So there's some activity here. That's good that there's any activity. Have we finished downloading the... We have. Let's sync that up. $22.95. Thank you for the sync. It's always easier to give tuning advice when I have audio. The, uh, the sound of the motors tells me so much about what the copter's doing. So check it out here. You did a throttle punch in the middle of a turn. Did the copter destabilize on either of the axes? Let's have a look. It felt like there was a little bit of pitch movement there, but overall not too bad. It's a little hard to tell what's going on with your sticks, but overall the copter didn't get crazy out of sorts when you punch the throttle there. That's good. Little prop wash activity here. Wasn't really visible or audible. We can see it in the D term. That's the yellow line. That's fine. Actually, and it's good there. The way you slung the copter into the turn like that, if there is prop wash, that'll bring it out. So the fact that it was sort of smooth there is a good sign. The copter isn't overtuned. A little prop wash there. You hear the sound of the prop wash oscillation? Right there. That's fine. That's not a problem. High throttle here. Your gyro, your D-term gets a little active. Your gyro doesn't get crazy noisy. That's fine. Let's look at pitch. Again, the D-term gets more active. The line's going up and down more. But if we zoom out, it's not crazy bad. Let's watch what happens next. Notice that when you chop the throttle there, what happened to the nose? 
Did the nose come down a little? I think it did. Just a little, just barely. So your copter is, is flying really nicely. Your throttle is not destabilizing the copter much at all. That's a good sign that you're, you're close to a good tune. That's a good sign. If you're going through turns and the copter is holding its attitude, especially as you punch the, or chop the throttle, that's a good sign. If you're going through a turn and the copter is kind of wallowing out and wobbling around up and down, that's a sign that the tune is not as good. A little crop wash there. That kind of spiraling, descending turn you did that also will bring out prop wash a lot. And the fact that your copter stayed smooth through there is a good sign that you're, you're in a good place with your tune. Right there. I think your tune is really solid and it's just a question of tweaking it for feel. So I think the way I sort of break it out is I say that the when you're at 80% tuned, somewhere between like 80 and 85%, the copter is essentially flying well and you're mostly tweaking for feel or during extreme scenarios like hard hard uh, pylon turns or or really aggressive flips or rolls. And I think you're there. It feels like you're sort of at the 80% point, definitely. Yeah, no, it feels like your copter's flying really good. Um, what I would do is... Oh, no, yeah, I, I like this a lot. I don't know if I would touch much. I don't know if I would touch very much about this. Oh, Jesus. Well, here's what you can do to make things better. 712 grams with the camera and the battery is too heavy. Your copter, you've got a, a really good tune right now. There are probably little things you could do to try to tweak it. But overall, I mean, I see where you're at with your PID numbers. I feel like you're probably in a pretty good spot. So maybe you could get your P's a little higher and your D's a little higher and you could get a slightly sharper stick feel or maybe a little better prop wash handling. But you're, it's really good where it is now. So don't screw it up. Screenshot this, right? And don't screw it. Don't, don't get off into a tuning bunny trail where you, and you lose what you've got. Um, but overall, if you like how it's flying, I don't see anything that jumps out that I would change it flying really good. Um, but um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Oh, right, the weight. 712 grams is too heavy, too heavy. you got to get that down if you want to improve your copter's flight performance. The difference between 700 grams and 600 grams is huge, okay, to, uh, to borrow a term from one of our presidential candidates. It's huge, the difference. And you're like, oh, it's only 100 grams. No, it's huge, okay? If you can get down below around 575 to 550, you'll be in a much better shape. Now, that may not be possible depending on how you've built your copter. You may just not be able to get it down to that weight. But if you can shave off, if you can find somewhere to shave off that weight, it would help. If you can only shave off 40 grams, just don't bother. Don't bother. It's not that... you. you that's for your next build. But your next build, start thinking about weight because 700 grams for a copter, for a 250 size, 210 size copter, it's too heavy. That's my opinion about that. Um, perfect sequence of moves for log file analysis. Uh, again, I would refer you to my practical PID tuning series. Now, here's the thing. When I do the practical PID tuning series, the first thing I do is I just go out and fly, and if the copter feels like it's flying pretty well, I skip ahead to try to bring out the problems. If you're going to send me a log for analysis, you should have a more sort of general picture of things to do. Um, but but yeah, the, the moves I'm, sh I'm talking about there, just general flying, it, it needs to be some, some more aggressive stuff. If all you're doing is hovering around in a field, there's nothing to see there. Punch outs, flips, rolls, hard 180 turns, definitely. Um, uh, move the throttle around. Jam the throttle. Go fast one way. Cut the throttle. Turn. Punch the throttle the other way. That dis uh, I like to do a move I call a, uh, a curly cue, where the copter is kind of going zoom, 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 zoom. And I feel like that really brings out prop wash. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't have really a, 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 a fixed set of moves. But you got to get out there and do something. Okay, that's my advice to you, Larock. Get your weight down if you can. Lose weight. Haha, <laughs> aren't we all supposed to do that? But um, if you can't do that on this build, then do it on your next build. Plan to have lower weight. Figure out how to do that. Okay. It was an ESC. Tell me more, Adam. I want to hear more about that. What was it? Yeah, I feel like on a 210 size, 210 to 250, if you are around 500 to 550 grams with an HD camera and a battery, then that's a good place to be. If you're close to 600, that's a little heavy, but hey, what can we do? And if you're over 600, 650, 700, that's bad. If you're below 500 in the fours, that's extraordinary. It is really hard to get a 210 size, 250 size-ish copter below 500 grams with a high, with a high def camera. Uh, battery to ESC, I think 18 to four, look look at what you find on the ESC already when it ships from the manufacturer. I think it's typically 18 to 14 gauge, but I'm not sure about that. I'm still waiting from Adam to hear what the, the, what the, Adam, you were the yaw issue, right? I'm still waiting to hear what your ESC was doing. All right, one more, one more, and then we're going to call it. Oh, man, this is going to be almost a three-hour live stream. How about that? This is my longest one. Thank you for the video sync time, RC Addict. Thank you so much. Let me clear this out. Yeah, exactly, RC Addict. If you can get below, yeah, that's what I mean. If you can get below 500 with a high def cam and a battery, that's a real achievement. So if you're at 525 all up, that is a you're that's a that's a real achievement too. I just sort of draw the line at 500. Okay, I already got that. Where's the log? Uh huh. Where's the black box log though? Am I missing something? I'm just getting the file again and again and again. No, it definitely that definitely was not the yaw twitch issue. The yaw twitch issue. You see the gyro go do do do. Log is down in the files. Oh, thank you so much. It's getting late. I'm getting tired. <laughs> thank you for pointing out the obvious. I fail. <laughs> So you want to know what your D term looks like. Honestly, a difference of filtering from 100 to 95, it's not going to make much. I mean, if it works for you, stick with it. But a 5 hertz difference, it's really just almost negligible. So Adam, that fixed the issue with the yaw stability. Was again? Were we talking about the yaw stability? I can't. I can't keep everybody straight. It was the. It was the getting destabilized on yaw, Adam. That was you, right? And the, the new set of ESCs fixed it. If that's true, then that's awesome. But I still can't figure out why we didn't see a big twitch in the pid sum. Maybe it was the expo was sort of shrinking it down, but it was pretty huge. So, anyway.
Uh, as for prop wash, there's a real limitation to how much I'm going to be able to tell you about tuning prop wash uh, by looking at black box logs. I tune prop wash in the field, and it's just a huge amount of trial and error. You push the P up as high as it can go, and then you raise the D to see if the prop wash is tamed. And if you need to, then you work the T, the P back down. And if the motors get hot, you bring the D down and then you work on the filtering. It's just a lot of back and forth. And eventually you find a place where it's as good as it's going to get, but it's never perfect. And then what you do is you fly and you fix it with the sticks. Okay. I can, I guarantee you that almost any copter out there, if you fly it hard enough, you will get prop wash out of it. If that's not true, then whoever tuned it and built it is a genius. But I'll have a copter that I'm doing, I'm doing tuning and I'm jamming it back and forth across the field and it's going, ah, ah, prop wash. And then I just do an acro flight and I just calm down and it flies fine and you hardly see the prop wash at all. So it's, I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell you how to tune prop wash just by looking at your black box log. So I'm looking at your D term here. Let's look at pitch and roll. And what we want to look for is noise, and we'll look for the thickness of the line. And the, what I'm seeing here doesn't look excessive. The other thing you can look for is look at the motors and see if the motors are going bop, 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 bop. Boris used to call them angry Pac-Mans. And you can see that the motors are not super twitchy. So your D-term doesn't feel excessive here. Here comes something. Yeah. No, your D term doesn't feel excessive or, or here based on the amount of noise and the amount of filtering you've got. M37 with Betaflight 290 is not anything crazy for the amount of noise that your copter has. If you have a really unbalanced props like those DYSs, they may be too much, but no. Uh, 98, 98, yeah, okay. So no, your D term feels fine there. As for as for the the prop wash, yeah, yeah, like here. I mean, in general, to fix prop wash, you can reduce P or you can raise D. Those are the two things that you can do. Both of those, in my in my experience, consistently makes prop wash better. Um, he does have video. That's that's correct. I just haven't got there yet. I thought I started downloading it. Uh, and it's just a question of the trade-offs you're willing to make in order to do that. If you reduce P, then your copter flies softer. But, uh, but you know, so at a certain point you're like, well, that's too low. I don't want that. And you have to make a trade-off. Yeah, so so you just have to find out where you, where you are within those limits that is the best place for you to be. That's the answer. Um, you can – what props are you using? Let's see. Let's go back. T5040 V2. That's a fine prop. The light, lighter props, lower pitch props, thinner props will be more responsive and will handle prop wash better. You're there. Uh, the little B is not a spectacular ESC anymore. It's good. You should be able to tune it pretty good. If you wanted to say, look, what's one thing I could do to improve my setup? It would be to get a, a, another, a more modern ESC with excellent braking uh, performance. So maybe an S, a BL Heli S ESC or an F390 ESC, maybe. But the little B is good. So you could try that to try and squeeze just that little last extra bit out of your out of your performance and get the prop wash down a little bit. It might not be worth it though. Yeah, the HQ is a lighter prop. The 2300 kV motor has also got plenty of torque to spin that prop, so so you're good there. And your filtering, the other thing you can do to improve prop wash, are you using multi-shot or are you using one-shot? Try flashing the multi-shot firmware to these and run multi-shot at 2 kilohertz. Don't try to run these at 4 kilohertz, but try multi-shot. I, I found that my P-term oscillation got worse with one-shot than with multi-shot. 
Uh, if you're running Betaflight uh, 290, then Multishot has full resolution. There was a bug in earlier versions of Betaflight. I don't know if it was fixed in 2.8 or 2.9. I'm pretty sure the bug was there in 2.7, where Multishot was not running at full resolution. So if, since you're on 290, try flashing Multishot to these ESCs. Run them at run them at two kilohertz, don't and, and with multi shot and see if that helps. That's an easy thing you can do right now. I have no opinion about that. I haven't tried reversing the motor direction, and I don't know whether it helps with prop wash. Did I tell you that? Oh, oops. Ah, well, the thing is, it, it does increase the possibility that you'll smoke an ESC. But then you'll have an excuse to buy better ESCs, right? So good. But the thing is, you're if you're sort of tuned yourself to the, you gone the, over here and over there, and you just, what can I do? Well, that is a thing you could do, right? So it is a thing you could do. I don't, in general, recommend multi running the multi-shot firmware on the Little Beast or any other F330. But since you're trying trying to get to the edge of the performance envelope, it may be worth a try. Let's take a look at your video. Um, 1541. Okay. And see, the thing is, your tune is going to look great. That's the thing. Let me get this out of the way. See, no prop wash there. Let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Hang on. Your tune is just going to look great. Smooth. Nope. Well, little prop wash there. No prop wash there. You see that kind of sliding? You're not facing the direction you're going. That's where prop wash will come out. And you didn't have any there. No prop wash there. Your throttle was idle. And you raised it. You didn't shudder coming out of there. Nice little move there. Barely audible prop wash there. Nice property you got too. Little prop wash there. That prop wash you got there where you're going backwards and you jam the throttle. I don't think anything's going to get rid of that. Not today. So just don't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, come on. So your copter's flying great, and you're just wanting to get rid of that last little bit. Um, you could certainly try, you know, with the ESCs. I don't think it's going to get a lot better than you've got it right here, though. A thing you could do is you could raise min throttle, or you could not lower your throttle as much. Because the number one place where prop wash comes out is when you idle the throttle completely and then you raise it and in that little second where the motors first start to spin up you get that oscillation now the thing is if you raise min throttle then you're not going to get the inverted hang time that you want which is a trade-off but you're at a point where there are no choices you can make that will not have trade-offs except maybe going to multi-shot except you might smoke your escs but i think if you stay at two kilohertz you'll be okay so that's what i would say everything else you do with your tune is going to have some trade-off, and I feel like the copter right here is flying very well with almost no prop wash. I think I think I don't think there are any easy answers here. Um, so there you go. All right, ten oh five. Yeah. So yeah. So try raising that to ten fifteen or ten twenty, and I think that will help with the the you drop the throttle all the way and then raise the throttle. And, and that moment when you raise it, the copter shudders. But but it's still you might have to raise it more than you'd want to to really fix that. You can, I don't know about that. You have to flash the custom firmware to get multi-shot. Um, except for BL Heli S. BL Heli S will auto-detect. What's uh, ZMR X210 all up weight? Oh, I have no idea. I'm sorry. I, w I can't remember at all. Um... I have not tried those. Not the Akon. No. So the Cicada are the only SESC. I've I've also got some ZTWs that I haven't put on a build yet. But the Cicada are my only SESC so far. All right, guys. 
um, RC Addict, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for submitting the video. Your copter's flying great. Your property looks great as well. I'm very, I like you. I like it a lot. Um, we're going to call this one. I got to, uh, I got to go take care of this. Let's go take a bathroom break. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in. And that's going to be it for the live stream. And I'll see you next time. Happy flying.